now call to order. And uh, before I uh, proceed, let me uh, direct the committee secretary to acknowledge our source persons for today. Magandang tanghali po, Your Honors. For today's hearing, we have the following resource persons. Present on site are from the Bureau of Immigration, Fortunato S. Manahan Jr., Deputy Commissioner, Attorney Arvin Cesar G. Santos, Attorney Carlos B. Capulong, Attorney Ruben C. Casibang, and Attorney Candy N. Tan. From the Fiscal Incentives Review Board, we have Executive Director Ms. Marlene Lucero Calubag. From Global Com RCI, PAC Course Third Party Auditor, we have Mr. Paulino B. Fernandez Jr. From Lichu Property Consultants, we have Mr. David Lichu. From the National Bureau of Investigation, we have Attorney Medardo de Lemos, uh, Filipinas S. Astrero, and Christopher N. Godinez. From the local government of Pasay, uh, sorry, from the Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry Incorporated, we have Mr. Wilson Lee Flores, Clarissa Media Villo, Melanie Nicor Gornes. From the Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce, we have Mr. Lu Jin Ang and Mr. Ko Beng Sum. Present virtually, we have the following. From the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Ronilyn Haitin, Revenue Operation Group. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Sixto C. D. Jr. From the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, or PAGCOR, we have Attorney Victor Q. Padilla, Jr. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Ms. Rosalinda Pineda, Division Chief of the Bureau of Local Employment. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Anne Kathleen C. Gatdula of the Office of the General Counsel, Ms. Maria Teresa C. Molod Bersabal from the Economic Research and Training Development. From the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority, we have Attorney Percival Peralta. From the National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, we have Assistant Secretary Sarah Lynn S. Daway Ducanes and David Carlos C. Mangalindan. From the Board of Investments, we have Attorney Ian Dennis Arbaniked of the Legal and Compliance Service. From, also from Global Com RCI, we have Attorney Lawrence Brian Hagutin and Maria Enriqueta B. Albay. Also from David Lichu, Property Consultants, we have Grace Tud, Angela Jimenez, Presi Faigones. From Colliers Research, we have Joey Roy Bondok. From the Association of Service Providers uh, of POGOS under PAGCOR, we have Attorney Paul J. Bonco of Bonco and Fres Law Offices. From the Department of Interior and Local and Government, Attorney Ralph Jerome K. Ifurung. From the Local Government of Pasay, we have Mayor Imelda M. Calixto Rubiano. From the Commission on Human Rights, we have B uh, Vince Gamboa. That will be all your honors. Thank you, Comsec. And uh, we're honored and privileged to be joined physically by our STEAM centers, uh, Center Grace Poe, Center Joel Villanueva, and Center Bato de la Rosa. Today we'll be tackling three resolutions that were um, uh, referred to this committee. Uh, resolution number 229, authored by Center Grace Poe. And let me just read the title of the resolution. The resolution expressing the sense of the Senate of the need to evaluate the existence of Philippine offshore gaming operators, POGOs, in the country in the light of the social cost that outweigh the reported economic gains from its operations. We're also, uh, another resolution was also referred to this committee, PS number 225, authored by Senator Joel Villanueva, entitled the Resolution Directing the Committee on Ways and Means and Other Appropriate Committees of the Senate to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Revenues Generated by the Government from Philippine Offshore Gaming Operators, POGOS, vis-a-vis -vis the social cost attendant to the operation of POGOS in the country. 
The third uh, resolution that was uh, referred to this committee is PS number 227, authored by yours truly. Um, the uh, title of this resolution, a resolution directing the appropriate Senate committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the government's revenue, revenue collected from the implementation of Republic Act number 11590 and the economic and social cost incurred by the government in addressing crimes related to the Philippine offshore gaming operations industry. All three resolutions um, uh, basically uh, aims to look at the benefits and also the social costs that, uh, that uh, uh, is associated with BOGOS. And at the same time, this committee deems it necessary to conduct an oversight over uh, Republic Act Number 11590 or the law that uh, governs the tax regime of BOGOS. Uh, with that, um, ladies and gentlemen, this committee aims to um, aims to um, uh, find out and analyze the revenue uh, collected by government through the tax collections from Pogo, especially uh, under Republic Act number 11590. And then number two, we will also analyze the economic benefits uh, of Pogos. And then number three, the economic, uh, sorry, the employment generation of Pogos. Um, of course, we will also look at other facets, economic facets of this industry and how it contributes uh, to our economy. Um, just for the record, we will, uh, this, this hearing will be an offshoot of the hearing conducted by Senator Bato de la Rosa, who is here with us. Uh, he conducted a hearing on September 15, uh, 2022, and the hearing focused on uh, peace and order. And um, I would like to just establish some facts before we open the floor to our other senators. Uh, from that hearing, September 15, 2022, we uh, established uh, facts on peace and order. And I was, I'm, I, I'm going to show some clips uh, from that um, from that hearing that uh, Senator Bato conducted. It was an ex hearing, and uh, we'd like to take off from that hearing and uh, build on that hearing. So let me just show uh, some clips from that hearing. So this is a clip from that hearing. Uh, establishing uh, poker related crime. So let me just play the clips. Uh, ano yung pinakamaraming uh, kidnapping cases? Poker related, casino related, or the uh, traditional uh, anti kidnapping group? From the period 2022. We have the Pogo related as the highest form of kidnapping in the country, sir. Ilan percent? I'll use the exact number. We have uh, 15 out of the. Out of the 29 reported incidents for 2022, 15 are Pogo related. So more or less, it's a uh, 50%. We'll show you another clip. Okay, you yourself claim that uh, many of the kidnapping cases are uh, Pogo related. May I know what is the reason <laughs> on the increase of uh, kidnapping cases with regard to this uh, uh, Pogo? If, again, I have to base it from our statistics. From January to June, the rise of Pogo-related incident could be attributed because we started to open this uh, game or this online gaming. But from July to September, we only have one incident reported. Thank you, sir. During during what year? This year? 
this year, sir. Only have one related, related Pogo incident? No, sir. Uh, we have a total of 15 Pogo. So um, it's well established during the hearing of Senator Bato that there are Pogo related crimes. And we also took the PowerPoint presentation during that uh, hearing. And uh, let me just show you the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, during that uh, hearing, uh, again, dated September 15, 2022, uh, in 2021, there were eight Pogo related uh, kidnappings out of the 24 uh, reported kidnappings. In 2022, this is only uh, until, I think 2022 is only first half, no? if I'm not mistaken. There were already 15 related Pogo kidnappings out of the 29. And uh, in the next slide, we'll also show you the number of victims, reported victims. And this is also called out of the reports from the PNP. Uh, in 2021, there are nine victims, uh, POG-related uh, kidnappings. And in 2022, first half is 20 victims, uh, 20 POG-related victims out of the 39 uh, kidnap KFR reported to uh, PNP. So again, um, this hearing will be built on the hearing that was conducted by uh, Senator Bato focus that focused on peace and order. Today we'll be focused on the economic gains or losses, revenue derived from Pogo using the R, using the uh, latest law, RA11590. And of course, the most important is the employment generated by Pogo or the lack of it. So we'll be focused on these three items. So with that, uh, we'll... Uh, 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 Give the uh, microphone to uh, Senator Grace Paul, who has an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Fellow Senators, recent, con uh, recent concerning events have led me to seek the sense of the Senate in Senate Resolution Number 229, calling for the evaluation of POGOs in the country in light of the recent spate of POGO-related criminal activities. To this I hope that we start evaluation by looking at the actual data and numbers. Based on the latest DOF data, the POGO sector on average only accounts for 0.03% of our gross domestic product. It is true that they contribute to the coffers, but it comes at a significant social cost, which in turn pose a reputational risk that can affect our business and investment climate. While we already included POGOs and service providers in the covered transactions under the most recent amendments we made at the Anti-Money Laundering Act just last year, we remain in the gray list because of the way the Philippine government deals with the POGO industry. Investors might ask, why are these highly questionable events happening in the Philippines? Is it because those engaged in questionable businesses view the Philippines as a soft state where the rule of law is lacking and deficient? The pogo industry has been banned in China, as this has been a serious drain on their foreign exchange reserves. And in Cambodia, where Chinese-run gambling operations have also brought a host of social ills. This is the opportune time to weigh whether the POGO industry plays a significant role in our bid for economic recovery and growth despite its deficiencies and compliance with our laws. It is, even possible to, is it even possible to devise tax, peace and order, and immigration policies on entities that seem to evade law enforcement? Proponents of the POGO industry argue that we stand to lose three main things if we stop operations, tax revenues, jobs, and real estate profits. On tax revenues, the Bureau of Internal Revenue reported that collections from POGOs are on a steady decline. Before the pandemic, the industry contributed 2.38 billion pesos. In 2018, 
and 6.42 billion pesos in 2019. Revenue collections decreased sharply to 3.91 billion pesos in 2021. That's a measly 0.13% of the 3 trillion peso revenue in 2021. Again, only 0.13% of the total revenue of 3 trillion pesos in 2021. In September of last year, Republic Act Number 11590, or an act taxing Philippine offshore gaming operations, were enacted. This law provides a clear fiscal regime for the pogo industry, imposes stricter regulations on reporting, and clarifies long-standing issues on the taxability of pogo licenses. On jobs, only one out of four licensed POGO employees are Filipinos. One out of four. Considering that the jobs market continues to improve after a slump during the pandemic, there are close to a million more jobs now available even before the, more than when the pandemic started. Lastly, on its contributions to the real estate sector, should we really be concerned in the shrinkage in POGO operations? During the height of the pandemic, the dramatic reduction in POGO activity alone resulted in some 200,000 to 300,000 square meters of vacated office spaces in Metro Manila. Yet the real property sector has remained resilient, not depressed nor overheated as in many developed countries in the world, such as Europe, Australia, and the U.S., the real property sector is seen to thrive with rising demand from other segments of the economy, such as the business process outsourcing sector. Now that the economy has reopened, we are seeing the normalization of office-based operations. The alleged loss in real property profits if POCOs exit the country should be scrutinized more closely. Surely, property owners can find alternative uses for their properties especially in a fast-growing economy. In the context of a 23.8 trillion economy, whatever perceived loss might just be a drop in the bucket. The DOF has said that social costs are inherently difficult to quantify, particularly those that go beyond direct victims and heightened social fear. What is clear, though, is that these social costs affect investor per perception and consequently foreign direct investment decisions. According to the Philippine National Police Anti-Kidnapping Group, 17 out of 31 kidnapping incidents from January to September 22 were POGO-related. Just last September 16, our local operatives in the Chinese embassy rescued 70 foreigners who were allegedly detained and forced to work at the POGO site in Cainitarizal. There are have been several reports of POGO establishments involved in the human trafficking of Chinese nationals. POGOs have become a vehicle for criminal activities such as money laundering, illegal immigration, forced employment and labor, sexual exploitation, and other forms of violence. These dangers are incomparable with the Philippines' long-term development agenda. Before us is a very tricky balancing act. Are our institutions stronger than the POGOs to be able to withstand the risk to peace and order and possible long-term damage to the rule of law? Kaya ba natin? Kaya ba natin nabantayan ang operasyon ng POGO? While we are discussing this very divisive issue, what happens to the possible gap in the economy? We should double up our support to the, po the BPO industry because they will be the natural beneficiaries. We need to invest in retraining, reskilling, and dual tech education. We need more investment in connectivity so that the quality and price of bandwidth will not only go down, but also make work from home more dependable. Vacancies from POGO should bring re rental rates down further, improving the competitive advantages of other legitimate businesses particularly the BPO industry. We should also push tourism as an engine for decentralized economic development. But will tourists feel safe in our country, in our situation today? Incentives must only be given if tourists 
establishment source from their host communities rather than importing most of it outside. Tourist hubs can become natural micro engines for growth in the rural economy. LGUs should support the local farmers and craftspeople so they can fire up the creative economy. This is important because this requires little monetary capital, but rather use the innate skills of our people. Notwithstanding the challenges that lie ahead for the Philippine economy, we need to have the policy framework and political will to invite strategic investments from industries that are actually worthy of our focus. I implore my fellow legislation, legislators to act with urgency on this very important issue. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Grace Bo. Next, let me just uh, acknowledge presence, the physical presence of Senator Robin Hood Padilla and Senator Francis Tolentino. Uh, next, that will uh, give an opening speech to Senator uh, Villanueva. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, maganda at mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat, especially to our dear colleagues, Senator Padilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Bato, uh, Senator Grace po, and uh, our chair, Senator Gachalian. We commend our chairperson for uh, calling for this uh, hearing. This is uh, very important. I will not give a personal uh, opening statement. I would just like to base... Uh, everything that I'm going to say right now on the uh, hearings that we conducted for quite a long time. Again, the number one question that we should be asking is what would be our state policy when it comes to gambling? Nung pong tinatalakay yung Department of Migrant Workers, napakahalaga na ipinunto natin na hindi polisiya ng Estado na papuntahin sa ibang bansa ang ating mga kababayan to work there. The policy of the state is actually to uh, create jobs domestically and not push our kababayans to go abroad. But of course, we cannot blame them for greener pasture. They have to go out of the country. In fact, before the pandemic, 4,000, 3,000 Filipinos would go abroad every single day. Same thing with gambling. What is really our policy? We ask our students, our young people, to say, mag-aral kayo o magsipag kayo. Kasi pag nag-aral kayo, nagsipag kayo, magtatagumpay kayo. But the promise of gambling is different. Tumaya kayo sa game of chance, malay mo, makachamba kayo. Alam natin lahat, mas marami ang natatalo. So again, Mr. Chairman, let me start by sharing with you our, our accomplishments. During that time, if you recall, Mr. Chairman, when we filed Senate Resolution Number no. 243 uh, noong 2016, matapos mapabalita yung pag-aresto sa humigit kumulang uh, 1,500 illegal uh, workers, si Chairman uh, Sherwin was with us in 2016. Binabati pa nga ho namin yung Bureau of Immigration kasi tuwan-tuwa kami na aresto sila. Yung pala, during that time, may 50 million na siya na kinuha. Let me just share with you our accomplishments. First, Mr. P Mr. Chairman, during that hearing, we discovered that Next Games Incorporated, an online gambling operator, employed around 1,546 foreign workers. And only 11, I will repeat it, only 11 Filipino workers. This means that only 0.7% of the employees of Next Games were Filipinos. This is shocking, Mr. Chair. Jobs that could have been for Filipinos were given to foreigners with questionable work permits and or visas. Our hearings also led to the investigation, as I mentioned earlier, and eventual arrest of Bureau of Immigration Commissioners Al Argosino and Michael Robles for accepting bribes. Pangalawag, Mr. Chairman. Two years after the Clark incident, we were alarmed to notice because we were just having dinner with uh, Senator Angara dito sa may uh, uh, malapit sa Moa. At akala namin, nasa China kami paglabas namin, Mr. Chairman, kasi wala kaming makita ang Pilipino. And nung tinanong ho namin, puro sila foreign workers. So nagulat po tayo, no? And at that time, you will see a lot of uh, 
foreigners going around, mostly Chinese, almost in every corner of Metro Manila. Alarmed by this, we called another round of hearings and get clarity in, on the matter. During the hearing, Mr. Chairman, this is what we discovered. Ang dole nag-issue ng 115,652 alien employment permits. Ito ho yung binibigay pagka ikaw ay magtatrabaho bilang isang foreigner dito sa Pilipinas. 115,652 AEPs. That's from 2015 to 2017. Pero yung Bureau of Immigration nag-issue ng 185,099 special working permits from January to November 30, 2018 alone, Mr. Chairman. Isang taon lang. Clearly, there seems to be a mismatch between the process followed by DOLE and the Bureau of Immigration in issuing work permits. Our efforts, Mr. Chairman, led to the creation of interagency task force to monitor foreign workers in Pogo industry and the issuance of circulars to clarify that AEPs are mandatory for all foreign workers in the country because our constitution, Article 12, Section 12, uunahin dapat ang Pilipino bago banyaga sa bawat trabaho na ibibigay natin. Pangatlo, uh, Mr. Chairman, while we were holding the hearings, our office also discovered that in SM Aura Satellite Office ng Bureau of Immigration, ay eh involved po sila doon sa illegal scheme na pagkuha ng SWP within one day if the applicant pays an additional 5,000 on top of the regular 6,440 SWP application fee to expedite po itong proseso. So yung additional 5,000, wala hong resibo yan. Pero bibilis yung, uh, yung uh, application para sa special working permit issued by Bureau of Immigration. For 11 months po ito, nag, ano ho, no? 5,000 expedite fee. And tinignan namin yung 11 months transaction nila, multiplied by 5,000, that's about 900 million pesos, Mr. Chairman. 900 million pesos. We ask, where is this money? No one could actually point out where is the 900 million pesos. This led again, Mr. Chairman, to series of suspension of BI personnel in SM Aura, pati ho yung gwardiya doon, nakasuhan, nakasama doon sa modus operandi. Matatapos na ako. Pang-apat, Mr. Chairman, just to uh, lay the, the, the predicate, uh, Mr. Chairman. Pang-apat na accomplishment natin during the hearing, we also noted that PAGCOR cannot even give us concrete data on the number of foreign workers in Pogo industry. In fact, we called their attention to the fact that while ordinary casino workers, pag casino workers ka dito sa Pilipinas, meron kang lisensya, pero yung Pogo wala. So, that led, Mr. Chairman, to the introduction of offshore gaming employment licenses or OGEL. Ang problema, ito ay doon sa mga lehitimo na Pogo operators. Eh, mas maraming hindi lehitimo. At ito nga po yung dahilan kung bakit left and right ang criminal activities. Panlima, last but not the least, Mr. Chairman, we noted that Pogo industry appears to have very little contribution to the country in terms of creating employment at in terms of revenue. We discovered that there were more than 119,000 tourists during that time, mostly from mainland China, that were able to gain temporary employment in the Philippines. In terms of revenues, Mr. Chairman, Banco Central ng Pilipinas noted that in 2017, the net capital flows from Pogo industry is only 7 billion. This is equivalent to 0.04% of our GDP. Ulitin ko po, 0.04% of our GDP. In fact, according to DOF, from 2021 to August 2022, Revenue amounting to 8.38 billion from the industry only accounts to 0.03%. Ulitin ko, 0.03% of our GDP. Mas lumiit pa nga po, Mr. Chairman. Noong 2020, nadiskubri po natin dahil din sa ating mga hearings. Sinabi ng ating secretary during that time, Secretary of Finance, Secretary Dominguez, made mention na ang POGO ay may utang sa atin na 30 billion pesos in taxes. Mr. Chairman, you were there when Secretary Dominguez mentioned it. Again, 
Mr. Chairman, if we juxtapose this with the rising criminality involving foreign nationals who mostly work in Pogos, which includes cases of kidnapping, prostitution, and other crimes in the Philippines, does not seem to benefit from the industry. In addition, the higher risk for money laundering activities that is inherent in the industry is another item that do not count in favor of the industry. With the rising criminality in the country, an unemployment rate of 5.2% as of July 2022, equivalent to 2.6 million Filipinos, and low actual collection of revenues from POGOS amounting to 24.3 billion from 2019 to 2020 compared to the projected collection of 71 billion among others. We have to revisit, Mr. Chairman, our policies on, on this particular uh, issue. I voted for taxing POGOS here in this August chamber because wala tayong magawa, nandito na sila eh. Kesa naman hindi sila magbayad ng buwis. That's the only way we can do about it during that time. But now, it's good that we are doing this so that we'll be able to evaluate. Ito ho ba? Is it worth it pa rin? Is it worth it pa rin para lalo na sa ating mga susunod na generasyon? We look forward to participating in this discussion. Mr. Chairman, maraming salamat sa inyong patience. Maraming salamat, dear colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel. Um, Senator De La Rosa, any opening statement? The Chairman of the Public Order and Dangerous Drugs uh, Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any opening statement. I'll just ask questions later as we go along. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We ask Senator uh, Padilla for any opening statement. Senator Tolentino for any opening statement. No opening statement, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senators. Um, I also saw Senator Bongo virtually present. So let me just recognize him. So with that, and with the uh, permission of our senators, uh, we'll go into the presentation of the uh, revenue collecting agencies. Um, if, um, with your permission, we'll start with the um, BIR, and then we'll go to PAGCOR, because they also collect uh, franchise tax. And then we uh, go into NEDA, and then we call on DOF to cap it off. Uh, with the permission of our centers, if we can finish all of these four agencies, so we'll get a complete picture of the uh, uh, taxes being collected, as well as the economic benefits and cost uh, caused by POGO, and then we can ask questions uh, towards or to these four uh, government agencies. And then later on, we'll go into uh, some of the uh, resource persons, like Mr. Uh, Li Chu, uh, the other... Um, uh, industry stakeholders uh, in Pogo. So with that, uh, we'll call on BIR uh, to uh, report to us uh, their collection um, under Republic Act number 11590 and also uh, any um, uh, issues surrounding the implementation of the law. So we call on BIR. Good afternoon, um, Honorable Chairperson. Good afternoon to all of the members of the Ways and Means Committee. My name is uh, Attorney Sixto D. I am from the BIR. Go ahead, uh, sir, Attorney D. Y yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I think, sir, we submitted... Uh, uh, the the collections from Pogo. Uh, can can we ask that it be flashed on the screen? Maybe direct the committee secretary to flash the uh, position paper and the presentation of uh, the BIR. Attorney D, is this the uh, two-pager uh, letter that you sent the committee? Uh, uh, Your Your Honor, I was not the one who sent it. Uh, it was the operations group. 
So uh, I'm not uh, particular, sir, what what kind of the letter they they sent, but I know, sir, they submitted the data on collections. But do you know your data? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, the, uh, now on a uh, flash on the screen is actually the explanation of the Bureau uh, during the, I think this was asked by then Senator Nancy Benay during the budget deliberations of the OF, uh, asking the Bureau to explain the discrepancy, discrepancy between the POGO law projected collections vis-a-vis -vis the actual collections. So, sir, based on the estimates of the Department of Finance, Republic Act number 11590, or the POGO law, was projected to generate taxes in the total amount of 32.1 billion in year 2022. Uh, the above projections were based on the assumption that the operation of the POGO industry would return to the pre-pandemic levels and before the exodus of the POGO entities and their foreign nationals employed by them. However, contrary to the lofty expectations, POGO entities have not returned to the Philippines and the number of foreign nationals employed by POGOs have not reached its pre-pandemic levels, but drastically decreased as seen from the following data. Uh, can, can we move the... Thank you. Uh, as we can see, for POGO entities, uh, for 2019, there were six, 63 uh, licensees and 221 service providers. In year 2020, there were 55 licensees and 199 service providers. In 2021, there were only 38 uh, licensees and 153 service providers. Currently, I think this is uh, as of July, uh, there are 35 licensees registered with PADCOR and only 130 uh, service providers. But out of the 35 licensees, only 26 are operational. And with regards to the service providers, only 127 are operational. Then for the number of workers in the POGO industry, this is based on data of the Bureau of Local Employment, which I think was also sourced from PANCOR. Well, uh, as you can see, in 2019, the total foreign nationals were 123,649, which represents 85%, uh, while the Filipino staff were only 20,956, or 14.49%. For 2020, uh, there was a, a drastic decrease because I think this was the pandemic already. The foreign nationals uh, are only 28,394, uh, representing 67.02%, while the Filipinos are 13,991, 32.98%. For 2021, the foreign nationals were 14,838, or 48.52%, and the Filipinos were 15,745, representing 51.48%. Currently, the registered foreign nationals are 17,509, or 51.13%, while the Filipinos are 16,736, 48.87%. As we can see, if we compare year 2019 with, with year 2022, where there was a drastic decrease in the number of foreign nationals in the Philippines. Uh, just, just to clarify, Mr. Chairman, this is not a question, just to clarify, which means yung Filipino workers hindi rin tumaas. Would you agree? Because from 20,000, it's down to 16,000. Yes, sir. Thank I you. agree, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Next page, please. Uh, sir, the apparent reason for the failure of the POGO industry in the country to return to the scale seen previously was the confluence of the following factors. Number one, the transfer and relocation of the major POGO entities to other countries 
like Dubai, Vietnam. Number two, there's, there was a change in the taxing regime in the Philippines and the reluctance of Pogo entities who left to pay taxes. And number three, uh, there's an ongoing crackdown of the Chinese government against online gambling. Uh, uh, um, sir, in I think, sir, in China, uh, online gambling is punished, uh, even if it is committed outside its territorial jurisdiction, I think Chinese law has extraterritoriality. Uh, okay. Uh, nonetheless, despite the slowdown in the Pogo sector, the passage of the Pogo law has had a significant impact on revenue collections. For the semester of year 2022, the total taxes collected uh, amounted to 3.9 billion which is almost equivalent to the collections for year 2021 at 3.9. Uh, sir, can I just uh, make a correct, uh, no, adjustment? Currently, sir, the total collections right now is uh, for 2022 is 4.483 billion. So, nag-increase pa po ng konti. Uh, uh, lastly, moreover, the data provided by the Bureau of Local Employment shows that there has been a gradual increase on the number of Filipino workers as against foreign nationals employed in the Pogo industry. From only 14.19% in year 2019, uh, Filipinos currently comprise 48.87% of the total workforce in the industry. But as noted by Senator Villanueva, the number is still low as compared to the previous years. And again, just to clarify, this is not a question. In 20... 20, the collection is 7.17 billion. In 2022, 3.9 billion. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Thank you. Attorney D, are you uh, done? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Any more uh, presentation? Uh, I think so. We we just provided a schedule of the collection uh, for for the taxes, but, uh, but I, anyway, sir, I mentioned it, Karina, that uh, it's already four point four eighty three billion for twenty twenty two. All right. For what month is that? That four point uh, four from January to August thirty one. Your Honor, twenty twenty two. All right. So. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney D. We now go on to PAGCOR, represented by uh, Attorney Padilla. Uh, yes, yes, Madam Chairman. I would like to uh, introduce the CMED for the introduction of our income of POGOS. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, for our income from FOGO operations from 2016 to present, we have collected a total of more than 30 billion uh, from gaming operations and other related fees. So um, it, it, uh, for the year 2016, um, we have a total of 657 million. For 2017, 3.9. Ma'am, ma wala ba kayong PowerPoint? Kasi mahirap sundan pag... Uh... Pag uh, my figures, eh, we're not, uh, it's very difficult to track down. Did you prepare any PowerPoint? Yes, we uh, advise you ahead of time to prepare. Um, Pagcor being an agency collecting uh, license fees, which is a major uh, revenue uh, source for government. So the least you can do is uh, yes, PowerPoint sir. presentation. Uh, yes, good afternoon, sir. We submitted uh, the data. I had uh the this is the one baka merong mas maliit Mr. Chairman shadong malaki yan yeah yeah is this the ones you submitted Mr. Chairman go ahead the okay. center button oh baka masyadong busy itong pagkor at uh, hindi mo lang sila prepare ng PowerPoint presentation ito na katagalan ito nating uh, uh, pina, pinahanda sa kanila. Uh, sir, hindi ko prepare kayo dyan? 
Yes, sir. Thank then after you, you were you were able to prepare a PowerPoint presentation, we'll, we'll just have to ask where uh, our admin submitted the PowerPoint presentation ahead of time. Actually, it was submitted ahead of time, especially the income of Pagpor. Uh, just for the record, we didn't receive any okay. PowerPoint presentations from Pagcor. We only received the letter reposition paper. So not to belabor the committee, uh, we have this position paper. I think this okay. is uh, the same with what you were dictating earlier. Yes, so okay. we'll just proceed. No? So we don't belabor the, uh, the committee. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Um, thank you for Re referring to the previously uh, discussed um, uh, income from Pogo operations from 2016 to present, sir. Um, Packer was able to collect a total of more than 30 billion pesos, sir. Uh, uh, the breakdown of which is as follows, sir. For, for 2016, uh, we have a total of 657 million. For uh, 2017, 3.9 billion. For 2018, 7.6 billion. For 2019, 8 billion. For 2020, 5.2 billion. For 2021, 3.4 billion. And for January to August 2022, sir, uh, we, we were able to collect 1.9 uh, billion for a total of 30.886 billion. Um, um, Mr. Chair, just a quick question. But the total revenue of PADCOR reached about 75 billion, right? At some point. What was your total income pre pandemic, like 2019? Pre pandemic? Total income for 2019, uh, ma'am, is um, 8, billion. 8 billion. No, no, no. Not from offshore gaming. Oh. The total income of PADCOR. I said we want to be able to compare in relation to your total income, what percentage is a contribution from yeah, the yeah, offshore yeah. gaming? Um, Ma'am, we will inquire from our accounting department. Alam ko umabot kayo ng 17, 75 billion, eh, Mr. Chair, at some point. So let's say we take the highest contribution rate of uh, an offshore gaming uh, industry at about 8 billion. <clears throat> so 75 billion, the highest ng PADCOR. Wala pa rin, hindi ma... Anyway, that's just for uh, for the record, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, ako na muna sasagot para sa PADCOR because we computed that. Eh. No? So in 2021, the total revenue of PADCOR is 35 billion, of which uh, the POGO uh, income is about 3.5 billion. So, Pogo, uh, as to the revenues of PAGCOR, is about 9%. Uh, do we have the data prior to the pandemic? The, Maybe 2019 or the 2019 data, you're right, ma'am. No? The 2019 data is higher. The revenue from PAGCOR is about 82 billion. And the, uh, the revenues from Pogo is about eight billion, so that's about nine percent. So about the same rate. About the same, about the same rate. Thank um, you, Mr. We'll flash that later on. I asked my staff to, to uh, put it together. All right. Thank Any you. Any more? Uh, uh, let me recognize the presence of uh, Senator Tulfo. Thank you. Any opening Senator statements, uh, Senator Tulfo? Uh, Mami, ano lang po pag. Uh... Tatanong ako. Pag uminit na kayo. Hindi naman. Hindi <laughs> pa kayo umiinit eh. Mamaya, pag uminit na. Uh, Pagkor, any more uh, presentations? Any more um, uh, data that you want to share with the committee? No more presentations, sir. Thank you so much. Sige, let's stay put. We'll ask questions uh, later on. Uh, the next will be um, uh, Neda for the economic uh, impact. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. NEDA has no new estimates apart from the one that we sent in May 2021. 
there we said that and uh, I can share my my PowerPoint. In the meet in that is May 2021 statement, uh, which uh, includes estimates regarding the impact of uh, Pogos uh, in the economy, mm -hmm. with a boost in office housing and related activities from the Pogo industry, as well as Pogo employees' salaries, transportation, and insurance expenses. Yeah, that's preliminary estimates indicate that Pogos contribute about 79.1 billion pesos to the Philippine economy. And this translates to UBS 0.4% of GDP in 2019. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm just, I think I just have to point this out. You have a different 0.4% uh, because in the uh, data given to us by Department of Finance, it's 0 0.04 to our GDP. Are you sure? 0 0.03 actually uh, on the average. This is what we uh, submitted in May 2021, Your Honor. Uh, it's uh, based on uh, Table 1. Still, uh, down the one there. submitted to us by uh, the Department of Finance is 0 0.03, 0 0.04, and 0 0.03 as average. So do you stand by your uh, figure that it's 0.3? This is what we submitted in May 2021, Your Honor. Yes, I'm asking if you yes. uh, stand by your figures because it's totally different from other departments. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, uh, this uh, ends my presentation, uh, Mr. Chair. As uh, I mentioned, uh, we have uh, no new estimates right now. Uh, we, uh, we are currently uh, estimating, uh, but we are awaiting some data from other government, relevant government agencies. Um, let me just, uh, so that everyone will be, will be guided. These are gross value added. Tama po ba? What is this amount in billions? It's 79.1 billion pesos. Correct. But what, 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 uh, what is this? Is this gross value added? Is this revenue from this uh, associated business? Is this tax collection? Uh, what is this? Point four is the GBA, Your Honor. I know, but what is uh, this 79 billion? It's a GDA, Your Honor. So it's gross value added. Tama? Yes, Your Honor. Can you can you uh, answer loud louder? It's gross value added. It's not revenue. Your Honor, let me just clarify that the 79.1 billion pesos are from various sources. For example, salaries, uh, expenses uh, incurred by, by POGOs. Correct. But these are, what are these? These are revenue from the associated business? Or is this gross value added, meaning value coming from POGO and associated business? Because it's different. So that everyone will be on the same page. Honor, may I refer you to our technical staff for this, Mr. David Mangalindan? No, this is very important so that we mm -hmm. will understand uh, how we value the entire POGO sector. So you have to explain the 79 billion pesos clearly. I think what uh, Senator Joel was referring earlier was the tax revenues, 9.04. But this one, 79, what, what number is this? For, for more clarification, Your Honor, may I refer you to Mr. David Mangalindan, our... 
ahead. G- can you give us someone who can answer clearly so and who knows the technical numbers? Go ahead po. Go ahead, Mr. David. Audible now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. The 79.1 billion is uh, direct distribution, direct distribution, so it's not uh, considered a GPA. Sorry, can you may, may, uh, you're, you're coming in choppy. Can you repeat that again? Uh, 79.1 billion earlier indicated as uh, we have submitted in 2021 is direct distribution. Now, 0 0.4 that Asexara was mentioning is the GBA effect. Mr. Chairman, can I move that uh, this uh, representatives of NEDA be uh, required to be presented physically? Ang hirap naman ng presentation na ganun. Eh, hina pa yung signal nila, pawala-wala pa. Paano tayo magkakaroon ng clear na hearing dito? Eh, itong iba, ito po, director ng NBI, andito. Yung uh, PNP, andito. Itong ating mga taga-civilian sector, andito. Itong taga-guberno natin na neta, bakit kayo magpakita dito? Paano magkaklaro? Paano maging resulta ng ating hearing dito? Eh, nagpapasahan pa sila. Hindi pala alam ko ano yung sagot. Mas maganda sana kung andito sila, Mr. Chairman. Baka andyan lang sila sa opisina na, Mr. Chairman. Pasakayin na natin ang taxi. Puntahin dito. Baka pwede eh. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I commiserate with my uh, dear colleague, Senator Bato. We are not requiring the secretary himself to be here. We are not requiring the secretary to be uh, virtually present. We are uh, conducting a very important uh, hearing in this August chamber. And it's so unfortunate because just a while ago, I was so confused with the GDP. It's increase in GDP. It's not vis-a-vis -vis our GDP. We have been talking about the GDP for, for, for quite a while. So, hindi ka talaga pwede hindi ma-confuse. So, I hope and pray, no, kung hindi man pupunta dito, you make sure na malakas yung signal at masasagot yung tanong natin. Otherwise, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, 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 I would also move that uh, even the Secretary be called in this uh, hearing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bato. Thank you. Thank you, Senator uh, De La Rosa and Senator Villanueva. In fact, I saw sen uh, Secretary... Uh, Balisakan this morning, it's the National Statistics Month in which I was invited to give a short talk and actually I reminded him about this hearing and I told him that uh, uh, if he cannot come personally, just send someone who is knowledgeable uh, and who can explain the figures uh, uh, correctly. Uh, of course, uh, the, the part of the review is the economic contribution of Pogo, so NEDA is very important uh, in this uh, discussion. And I'm very disappointed that uh, the people who were sent cannot even answer how they came up with that 79 billion pesos and what is the 79 billion pesos. So um, uh, we will now, uh, based on the motion of Senator De La Rosa, will require the NEDA to personally come to this hearing, to the, to the next hearing. And uh, we will also require um, the uh, secretary to join us next year. No, Mr. Chairman, I am not uh, asking for year. the secretary. I just want to put that on record. As mentioned a while ago, we are not requiring them. It's just that they should be ready. For instance, Mr. Chairman, we have been talking about the impact of this uh, POGO to our GDP. Eh, yung mga nasa, nasa online, Mr. Chairman, hindi yata nakikinig sa kwentuhan natin, sa usapan natin dito, papasok lang sila pag magpipresent sila. So, nakakalungkot, Mr. Chairman. No? That's, that's, that's all I'm asking. Makinig sila, sagutin yung tanong natin. Uh, I'm, I'm not 
asking for for Secretary Balisakan to be here. I I am supporting the uh, motion of Senator Bato. Na at least someone from uh, NEDA would be here and be ready to answer our questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I hope that uh, NEDA and uh, BIR or DOJ, uh, DOF should realize that their uh, inputs into this hearing are very vital. Kasi ako nga, matagal lang natapos yung aking hearing, but I cannot just uh, present my, submit my committee report pending the result of this hearing. Kasi, yun nga, kaya kailangan ko yung uh, we can submit conclusions and recommendations in our committee report based on uh, factual data and not based on emotion. Hindi porki galit tayo sa pogo, eh, ganun na lang kagalang decision natin. Kaya gusto ko sana uh, data-based yung ating magiging conclusion, Mr. Chairman. Eh, paano tayo magkakaroon ng maganda conclusion dito at recommendation kapag uh, yung ating inasahan na ahinsya na magbigay sa atin ng kalinawan ay malabo yung presentation. So, yun lang po ang sa akin, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I agree with you, Senator Bato. And uh, that's why we uh, require the, the four uh, agencies who have direct uh, responsibilities on the economic impact as well as the revenue generation to go ahead so we'll get a good picture of uh, the overall industry. However, NEDA is not ready to answer, um, explain and answer questions. So um, since uh, the hearing is ongoing, may we request, uh, first, we will require NEDA to personally attend the next hearing uh, to explain to us uh, in person uh, the figures that were flashed earlier, whether the secretary or someone who is um, knowledgeable with the, uh, uh, with the topic on hand. But for the rest of the hearing, may we request NEDA to s send someone who is knowledgeable on the topic. Uh, I can see that the people who were, uh, who were tasked to uh, join this hearing is not uh, well briefed with the number so habang may time pa tayo please uh, call your usex or your asex to join this hearing um we, before we continue uh, let me acknowledge the presence of uh senator escudero thank senator. you mr chairman mr chairman just a point of information actually i understood what the neda said they said it's 79.1 percent or 0.4 percent contribution to gdp now, GDP is a standard measure of the value added created through the production of goods and services in the country. So that means the 79.1 billion for 2019 is the equivalent of the goods and services contributed by POGO to the GDP of the country, which is equivalent to 0.4%. Now, Senator Joel earlier mentioned a figure of 0 0.03 by DOF. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen that paper yet that it says 0 0.03, but so far what we have is NEDA saying, which is an arm of the DOF, that it's at 0.4% for 2019 and that they're gathering more data with respect to succeeding years of 2020. It's clearly not taxes because total taxes connect collected by um, the BAR are clearly far lower. They're at 3.1 billion. So we kinalaman talaga yung taxes. This is its contribution to our GDP which in 2019 amounted approximately 20 trillion pesos. That's where they got the 0.4% of GDP. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think there's some confusion earlier. Uh, Senator Villanueva mentioned 0 0.03. That is revenue to GDP. And that's why we were seeking clarification from NEDA, whether that 79 billion is revenue, gross value, add, gross value added, or direct contributions, or whatever. No? So um, we will compare apples to apples. I subscribe to that, Mr. Chairman, because of the way I, I was listening in my room, it was contribution to GDP, the 79.1 billion. It's not revenue to GDP. So perhaps both figures are correct, only that they pertain to totally different things, as you pointed out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Correct, correct. Senator Tulfo? Yes. Mr. Chair, kanina pinag-usapan niyo po yung economic impact ng Pogo sa ating bansa. If I may, medyo lilist ako ng konti, gusto ko lang pag-usapan yung uh, peace in order, yung impact sa peace in order 
sa ating bansa. That's the reason mainly why we're here. Dahil yung sunod-sunod sa mga nangyaring krimen na involved po itong mga uh, ata, uh, workers sa Pogo. Um, kasi nabanggit na ito ilang beses. In fact, mismo si uh, uh, Senate President nagsabi po sa isang restaurant, ang daming mga Pogo bodyguards, yung mga opisyal ng Pogo, na marami mga dalang bodyguards. Ako mismo nakakita ko niyan. Baka pwede tayo makipag-umiling uh, sa PNP na disarmahan, pulihin, eto mga taga-pogo na merong isang dosen ng bodyguards at may bitbit na mga baril, may mga sukbit na baril. Recently, I went to this restaurant, I think it's East Ocean, somewhere in Pasay. Pagpasok ko doon, nako, sandamakmak na mga Chinese na nagbabodyguard sa kapwa nilang Chinese na opisyal ng pogo. Ako ang medyo nahiya sa sarili ko. At the same time, nandun yung pangamba ko, baka isa ako sa mga baril o makidnap o bugbugin. Dahil overwhelmed na talaga yung lugar. Puro bodyguards ng Pogo. Can we do something about that, PNP? Or NBI? PNP uh, first, sir. Go ahead to the PNP. Yes, sir. Uh, to the honorable uh, members of this committee, I am Police Major General Eliseo D.C. Cruz, the Director for Investigation and Detective Management of the PNP. Uh, that concern was already... Uh, uh, tackled during one of the uh, meetings with the GPNP, and uh, uh, this will be uh, uh, initiated by the uh, director, Directorate for Operation, wherein uh, uh, the PSPG or the uh, Police Security Protection Group, under the uh, supervision and functional grouping of the Directorate for Operation will be are now uh, accounting their uh, police uh, security personnel who are providing uh, protective security to some uh, individuals authorized by by the GPNP yes, but uh, we are now investigating this uh, concern sir sorry general uh yung sinasabi ko okay salamat yung mga yes, PSG sir. PSPG, uh, imamonitor nyo, i-audit uh, nyo kung saan sila na bodyguard. Pero ang sinasabi ko po, pagpupunta ako sa mga restaurant, Chinese restaurant, nung puno po ng mga nagbabodyguard, Chinese nationals, ito po yung mga Chinese nationals, bumibitbit po ng baril, may mga dalang clutch bag, and I would presume na may mga baril po doon sa loob ng clutch bag, at ang binabodyguard nila, yung mga kapwa nila Chinese, na siguro yun ay mga boss nila sa Pogo. Yun po dapat ang mga sitahin po ninyo. Kasi tulad nung last time, pumunta po ako sa East Ocean Restaurant, Pagpasok ko po doon, punong-puno po ng mga Chinese. Yung isang kwarto, meron pa nga isang room doon, VIP room. Mga VIP room po, dadaan ka doon, sa East Ocean po, di pa kayo nakapunta. Bawat isang room, sa may pinto, siguro sampung Chinese na yun po ay mga bodyguard na hinihintay yung kanilang boss kumakain sa loob. At may kita mo, may mga bit-bit po sila mga clutch bag. God knows kung yung bay may usi, basuka o granada sa clutch bag na yun, dapat sinisita sila. Anong ginagawa nyo rito? Anong personality, bakit kayo, anong personality nyo, bakit kayo nandito? Diba? Ang dami po nila doon, sir. Nakakatakot po. Kaya nga sabi ko, hindi na sabi ko sa wife ko, huwag na tayong bumalik dito. Next time, I'm not gonna come here anymore. Kung okay. ganito rin lang palang patakaran na puro Chinese na nandito ang nationals at mukhang mga goons. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair actually, Mr. nung huling uh, pagdinig ni Senator Bato, yun pong lilinaw ng PNP na ang foreign national hindi pwedeng magdala ng armas. Tama ba yon? Tama, di ba? Yes, Sir Honor. O, sir, yun na, yun na lang po. Okay. Disarmahan po, ah, sir, pag nakita niyo mga yan. Okay, now, follow up. Um, kapag meron po nakikidnap ng members ng POGO, andito ba yung PAGCOR, yung worker ng POGO, uh, di ba dapat tungkulin po yan ng uh, PAGCOR, alimbawa, meron pong nakidnap o meron pong nag-AWOL, meron pong uh, hindi na pong mapasok sa POGO uh, kung saan po siya naka-detail. Di hold ba dapat nire-report yan uh, sa PAGCOR? And then PAGCOR report sa BID, sa Bureau of Immigration. And then Immigration report po yan uh, sa DFA para ma-account po yung mga POGO workers dito. Ang nangyari po ata, wala nag walang reporting Kasi po, under sa IRR ninyo, kapag meron pong isang uh, POGO operator, 
for failure to report na meron silang, meron isang Pogo worker na umalis ng Pilipinas o na-involve sa crime, hindi po na-report properly sa mga kinukulan, dapat po yung Pogo operator na yan ay maparusahan at kasama po doon ay suspension. Meron na po bang ganun nangyari? Nandito ba yung pag-core natin? Uh, yes po, sir. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, actually, we just wrote a memo with, uh, we had a uh, interagency coordination meeting with the head of uh, DOJ, uh, DILG, ENT, and NBI, and we emphasized that uh, the, po the POGO should work together in policing the ranks, and at the same time that any involvement on illegal activities or criminal activities shall be dealt with severely. Okay, dealt with severely. Ang talo ko ngayon, sir, meron na ba kayong naparusahan na si BAC na POGO operators dahil sunod-sunod po yung kidnapping, yung mga crime committed, against POGO workers by kapwa nila POGO workers. Dapat po, may parusan niyang katapat doon sa POGO operators for failure to report yung mga tao nila na involved sa crime, kidnapping, etc. Dapat po, may naparusahan na. Meron ho ba? Bigin nyo kami ng listahan kung meron man naparusahan dahil dyan. Uh, yes po. Actually, sir, recently... Kailan na pong naparusahan, sir? Meron po kami na revoke na license because after investigation, isa po. Isa pa lang? Yes, God, sir. Damn. Eh, ilan na po yung mga na-involve sa kidnapping, ilan na po na-involve sa patayan. Dose, dose na na po, Pogo workers. Tapos, isa pa lang ang na, ano nyo, napapasara, nasuspindi. Go ahead po, Sir. Sir uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, with the permission of uh, si, your honor, Senator Tulpo, uh, siguro kasi itong mga involved sa criminality at mga, mga kidnapping at barilan, itong mga sinabi nila last hearing, ito yung mga uh, illegal pogos. Kaya, how can they revoke an illegal pogo operator? And how can they revoke the license then, of an illegal pogo operator? Then in that case, may problema tayo sa DFA. Kasi uh -huh. lahat ng mga mag apply na papuntang Pilipinas para sila ay magkaroon ng trabaho rito, then dumadaan yan sa DFA. So lahat na pagdating sa DFA, sasaluin po ng ating immigration. Kung ano man po yung purpose na pagpasok nila dito. So dapat po accounted for yon, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Mm, Mr. Chairman, yeah. with the permission of Senator Tulfo, um, Senator Bato is correct. We have to distinguish between legal and illegal Pogo, Pogo establishments. May legal naman talaga ngayon, and the PNB and NBI will have to admit, may mga illegal Pogo operations din. In fact, karamihan ng mga krimen na nire-record apply to the illegal Pogo operators. Sila-sila nagtitirahan eh. Um, the problem is when the pandemic hit, a lot of POGOs closed down. But illegally, somehow, it was resurrected by some unscrupulous people. And um, I think the crackdown should be done by both the PNP, the NBI, together with the help of PAGOR, with respect to these illegal um, POGO operations. Um, a question should be, should be to PAGOR, may isa na ba? na legal POGO operator na empleyado nila ang suspect na huli o nakasuhan tungkol sa kidnapping o anumang illegal na krimen. Okay. Because they already filed 21 cases last year. <laughs> Mr. Chair. 21 cases filed. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Empleyado ba okay. ay empleyado ah. ng legal okay. o illegal POGO operator or just happens to be an immigrant? Mr. Mr. Chair. The answer meron, legal POGO operator na nakuha. May have to floor. Kasi sa akin, original yung galing yung ano yung tanong eh. Please. Okay, let me finish. Tama si General uh, Senator Bato. Tama ka rin. Uh, Senator uh, Escudero. Karamihan po kasi nangyaring krimen sa Pogo, bakit nangyari yun? Yung nagpapirata sila. Okay? Yun po yun eh. Dahil pinipirata, legal po ang pinag-uusapan natin. Okay, merong mga uh, illegal. Pero yung pong legal na, na pumasok dito as Pogo workers, pinirata nitong isang kumpanya na kulang yung kanyang tauhan. Doon po nagsisimula ang krimen. Nag-aaway-aaway sila eh. So, yun pong ibig sabihin. Sana kung pinirate po yung isang Pogo worker, ng another POGO operator, dapat yun nire-report sa immigration, sa PAGCOR, para yung PAGCOR mag-informa sa immigration, para yung immigration gumawa po ng mission order ng Sagayon, pupuntahan at ulihin yung na-pirate na POGO worker. At ng Sagayon, mapaparusahan po yung POGO operator for failure to report doon po sa mga kinukulan.
with, with the indulgence of our colleagues, no, uh, let me just yes, no. so that we will uh, finish all the presentations. Let's we just let let's just complete the presentation of DOF. Then after that, we can proceed with the questioning, starting with uh, uh, the senator who came in in, in uh, ahead of time. No? So, uh, Mr. Chair, just to answer the question of Senator Escudero, I think at the rate of the Lucky South 99 in Pampanga, that's actually a legitimate pogo operation. They have a license, apparently. And uh, one of the ones that were caught, this Chen Yi Bien, a.k.a. Ai Yi, um, is a licensed pogo operator. Um, and he actually, um, there's an affidavit here of a woman who's been abducted by this person. So even among legal operators, I suppose, uh, there's a crime involved when it comes to pirating of uh, each other's employees. That's just for the record, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Poe. So we call on uh, DOF. Okay. And after this, we'll uh, uh, go with the questioning. So uh, starting with uh, Senator Poe, who came in um, uh, the earliest. So Department of Finance. Attorney uh, Actin. Ronelin Hatin. Mr. Chair, yun ang sinasabi ko, Mr. Chair, na kung dito or sana sila, mas mabilis yung hearing natin. Oh. Hirap naman itong mga tao na ito, bakit uh, ayaw pumunta dito? Uh, yun lang, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank Sabi you. Thank you for sila. that. I share your frustration, uh, Senator uh, Bato. Last call for uh, Department of Finance who sent their position paper, but we want you to articulate your position paper. Wala po. Kung wala mong sasalita. Ah, there, there. there. Uh, uh, yes, Asek uh, Val, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we don't have a presentation, but we would want to articulate the position paper that we sent um, to the Senate so based on our data collected from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, on the average, the Pogo sector accounts for 0.03% of our gross domestic product from 2021, and our submission is until August 2022. So in monetary terms, this would be around 4.2 billion pesos. And the position of the Department of Finance is that while POGO revenues contribute to the government coffers, this come at significant social costs to us. We've seen some studies and um, POGO operations. There are links to some illegal activities such as prostitution, employment of minors, and violation of labor laws. And also following the reports of the Philippine National Police, there are also POGO-related crimes, of which kidnapping appears to be one of the most common. And all in all, Mr. Chair, due to these um, activities linked with Pogo, the POGO industry, this creates for us a reputational risk that can affect our business and investment climate and ultimately some decisions on um, foreign direct investments in the Philippines. In terms of social costs, um, these are inherently difficult to qualify, to quantify, but perhaps um, the NEDA can include this in their study. Another risk factor for us is that um, we have a goal of coming out of the Foreign Action Trust Task Force Gray List by January 2023. And in a 2020 report of the Anti-Money Laundering Council, they flagged POGO as um, a highly risky and, and it's susceptible to abuse given that financial transactions are generally remittance-based and non-cash and um, regulators and authorities have limited access to their transactions. So on the part of the department, uh, we see that um, their continued operations would actually have an impact on our efforts to get out of the gray list by January 2023. It, also, in addition, Mr. Chair, um, it's also a known fact that the pogo industry remains illegal in China. Therefore, 
we incur greater reputational risk by allowing them to continue to operate in the Philippines. Uh, we're also concerned, Mr. Chair, about um, investments on FDI, and we believe that through the efforts of um, Congress, we have softened the ground for foreign direct investments to come in through the economic liberalization measures, which, with the help of um, both the Senate and the House, we were able to pass in the last Congress. We've also modernized our tax incentive system through the CREATE and other um, tax reform measures. So we believe, Mr. Chair, that it is time to pursue investments that will really create value and high-quality jobs for our people. Of course, this is also in line with the current administration's trust for an inclusive and sustainable economic development. So that is the position of the Department of Finance, Mr. Chair. And as to the um, debate earlier on, on the uh, report of NEDA, the position paper of DOF is all only based in the years 2020 and January to August for this year. Um, and our figures are based on revenue, revenue collection from POGO. So this would be revenue collection in terms of income tax, um, business taxes, franchise or gaming tax, and the withhold, withholding taxes, documentary stamp tax, and other taxes, Mr. Chair. So as a percent of GDP in 2021, our revenue collection is 3.91. This is 0.02% of GDP. And for the year 2022, from January to August, revenue collection is 4.48 billion or 0.03%. So on the average for these two, for 2021 and 2022, January to August, Average is 4.20 billion, which is 0.03% of GDP. But perhaps, Mr. Chair, since uh, we already we also have BIR colleagues in the call, we can um, expand, expound on these um, figures on revenue collection. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Asa. Yeah, go ahead. Well, regarding the presentation, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, first recognize the minority leader, Senator Pimentel. And Senator Bato, we'll just do the yeah. rounds. If okay, we'll just do the rounds. Oh, okay. Senator yeah. uh, Grace, because she came in earlier, oh, okay. so she can. Uh, and no, I I will yield if there's just a, oh, okay. one question to the chair of the committee on uh, dangerous drugs and public order. Just this uh, on this presentation, uh, Ma'am. Uh, one thing that uh, you based on your presentation, very very clear that she has that. The economic gains of Pogo uh, does not outweigh the social cost. So, ibig mo sabihin, mas mabigat talaga ang social cost kaysa economic gains. And uh, clear naman sa presentation ninyo, dahil nga sa social cost, to, dahil sa krimen na nangyayari sa Pogo. Now, this is a hypothetical question, but maybe this can be answered by the PNP. Tanungin kita, ma'am. Halimbawa, na-cure yung problema natin sa peace and order dito sa Pogo. Pwede ba magbago yung posisyon ninyo na okay na kayo? Ipapatuloy yung Pogo? Or uh, you stand by your uh, uh, position na pwede nang isara yung Pogo? Tanungin lang muna kita, ma'am. Uh, what's your uh, answer on this? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, on the question of Senator De La Rosa, um, right now, Mr. Chair, the significant social costs that we mentioned also include the reputational risk. Kaya nga, the uh, reputation if, um, because of the crimes concerns. that are happening in this country. Ito nga ang tanong ko. Kung matanggal na nang maaris na na PNP yung situation sa peace and order, gumanda na, wala nang krimen na nangyayari, uh, magbabago ba kayo sa position ninyo? Uh, we stand firm with our position, Mr. Chair. You stand by your position? Kahit na wala nang kaso, wala nang problema, uh, doon pa rin kayo sa position ninyo? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, with the permission of Senator Paul, on this point, may I ask, ma'am, how did you compute social costs? 
at what point should we be earning, for example, from Pogo for you to say that the benefits will outcome the, uh, out, uh, overcome the social cost? And how did you come up with a figure on social costs being um, far weightier than the income or revenue derived by government or the country? Can you put a figure to it, ma'am? Mr. Chair, we actually don't have a figure at the moment, Mr. Chair. So where did the decision or conclusion that the social costs outweigh how did you arrive at that? What were the, if it were a mathematical computation or a list of um, things you considered, what would it be? And my next question is, so ano ba dapat yung income para masabi nyo na it outweighs the social cost and we should keep it? Otherwise, it's arbitrary, ma'am. So please, ma'am, can you respond? Mr. Chair, in our position paper, we did mention that social costs are inherently difficult to quantify and it's something that uh, the Department of Finance does not have any uh, figure at the moment. What we also raised with that, um, this social costs affect, invest affect investor perception and foreign direct investment decisions, and at the same time, um, might also affect our efforts to get out of the FATAF grey list by January 2023. But as to a particular figure, Mr. Chair, we don't have the figure at the moment. So it's discretionary on your part, arbitrary at best. I'll give you an example, ma'am. When the Bangladesh escapade happened, which is a big anti money laundering issue, it went through the casinos. And during that time too, KFRs were all related to casinos, reaching as high as 35 KFRs in casino-related kidnapping, which, is a, which has a social cost too. Um, there were serious considerations too about the Anti-Money Laundering Council at that time and the FATF rulings because the bank stolen from the Bangladesh, from the central bank, was coursed through a casino in the Philippines. Do you have an estimate too of the social cost at that time with respect to our income in relation to casinos, the social cost in relation to the KFRs, the social cost in relation to doing business in the Philippines and being flagged down by the FATF at that time. Um, I'm just drawing an analogy, ma'am, to find out what would be the threshold for you to say that it's worth it and it's not worth it in relation to the social cost and the income being generated by government by, by way of revenues and contribution to GDP. Where would it intersect? Uh, Mr. Chair, we don't have the figures at the moment, Mr. Chair. Um, but you are able to say it outweighs. Um, the social cost outweighs. So when will the benefits outweigh the social cost? Where will it intersect, ma'am? I mean, hindi naman pwedeng it outweighs lang. The social cost outweighs because of the small contribution. So do I take it that casinos with the bigger contribution outweighs the social cost? So therefore, we should keep casinos? At what point can you say it does and it does not? You don't have the figures right now or the way to compute, right, ma'am? I don't have, we don't have the figures at the moment, Mr. Chair. Neither do you have the figures with respect to social cost now. It's based on perception. We don't have the figures for the social cost as well, Mr. Chair. So where is it based, ma'am? If it's not based on figures, where is it based? Interviews, survey, perception, emotion, fear? What is it based on? What data is it based on? Um, that it might affect the impression of foreign businessmen intending to put in foreign direct investments in the country. Because KFR is not related to casino or POGO is by far higher. So with or without POGOs or casinos, there would still be KFRs. So where is it based on, man? Did you conduct a survey? 
that if POGOs continue, it will have a social cost and effect in so far as foreign direct investment is concerned. Was the survey conducted, ma'am? Mr. Chair, Mr. The Chair, there was no survey conducted, Mr. Chair. By so this is based on the assessment solely by officials of the DOF? Based on the assessment, um, and we took a look at some reports on the POGO industry, Mr. Chair, as well as um, its contribution to revenue collection, which is uh, uh, point zero. the last, the last point, Mr. Chairman. If, you're, if the only figure you have is contribution to revenue collection in GDP, kindly submit to us a figure that will make it worth it from your point of view. Meaning, anong contribution ba sa GDP? Anong contribution ba sa revenue? Yung dapat marating ng isang um, sugal o pasugalan o gambling para masabi nyo that it outweighs the social cost. Kindly come up with a figure and give us that, ma'am, so that we have a basis for um, saying that indeed social cost can be measured but at least based on that um, guidepost. I think that the questions of Senator Escudero can be best answered by the Secretary of the Department himself. Um, there's no doubt that when it comes to perception, a lot of it is based on emotion. And also uh, reputation is also built not just uh, quantifiably, but uh, based on the message or the signal that you give out. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, casinos, for example, of course, it's also an industry based on vice, the same way uh, the pogos are. Perhaps the difference is uh, there's a physical presence, an actual structure that is open to the public. Uh, it's accessible to the public. It's uh, generally owned by Filipinos. Um, majority of the workers are Filipinos. Maybe that's why even if it's not the ideal industry to be supporting, it's palatable because of those added benefits. So, um, again, uh, the questions of Senator Escudero are legitimate, but I feel that uh, it's more of a philosophical answer that can be authoritatively stated by the head of the agency. I understand also the uh, hesitation of the representative of the DOF because she's just merely reading a letter that was uh, signed by, if I, I believe, the secretary himself. Yes, by the secretary himself. Then in that case, Mr. Chairman, may I ask that we invite the secretary himself? Because in all of my committee hearings, same with you, I guess, it's okay for the secretary not to attend for as long as the person they send can answer questions. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Senator Bato. <coughs> and uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just to add to the point of uh, Senator Chis Scudero, I just want to make it clear that the reason for this uh, yung outburst of emotion dahil dito sa nagkalat na video na yung may tinanggalan ng tenga na mayroong pinapalo ng maso at uh, yung barilan ay na may dalawang namatay dyan sa may paranyake. And uh, I just want like, uh, very clear doon sa hearing, lumabas, na yung dalawang video na yun na kinatakutan ng mga tao, ng mga Pilipino at posible nakakasira sa ating imahe from uh, uh, from uh, abroad ay hindi po nangyari dito sa Pilipinas yung dalawang video na yun according to the PNP yung pangatlong video na barila may namatay ng yes nangyari yun dito sa Pilipinas dito sa Paranaque but according to the PNP it was not pogo related it was uh, casino related casino related yung uh, barila na yun uh, just, just for the record, Mr. Chairman, uh, because of this uh, uh, reputation, damage of reputation that was uh, uh, stated by uh, our uh, resource person. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So in order of uh, arrival, we'll call on Senator Poe for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, para magkaroon ng muka ang, ang ating diskusyon ngayon, Meron akong actually na nakausap na biktima mismo ng kidnapping, isang 29 years old na female na Chinese na nagtatrabaho sa isang legally, uh, well, licensed POGO operations. Ngayon ito, may affidavit 
na actually nakakuha ko from the PNP AKG. Nandito ba kayo ngayon? Wala yung AKG? Anyway, yung kwento nitong babae na ito, yun nga, na-kidnap siya, uh, held against her will in this uh, facility in Subic, tapos na-raid yung lugar, uh, na-rescue siya. Ngayon, ang isa pa na nakuha dun sa lugar na yon ay si Chen Yi Bien, a.k.a. Ai. He's a legal pogo operator. Nasaan na siya ngayon? Okay. Wala, walang makasagot. Nandiyan ba yung AKG? Opo. Did you, were, were you administered? Ay, hindi naman yata nag-off ngayon. Okay. Um, kilala po ba ninyo ito, si Chen Yi Bien? Sir, you can take your seat so so that we can have a, a comfortable discussion. Dito na lang po. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Police Colonel Frederick Uber from the PNP Anti-Kidnapping Group, Chief of the Luzon Field Unit and uh, the Intel Research Analysis Division. So, na nasa inyo po? Uh, for, the per uh, for the first, uh, for the first uh, suspect, actually, ma'am, yung uh, case ay uh, awala na po or tapos na po. Uh -huh. oh. For the other case... Yung Lucky South 99 raid, nandun siya, di ba? Yes, ma'am. For the other case, um, the uh, victims are now with the Bureau of Immigration. Bureau of, of what? Immigration. Immigration. Yes, and we were able to file a case of uh, human trafficking for the 42 victims. So is he, he, my question is, is he currently detained? Uh, for IE, yes, IE okay. was, uh, uh, we were able to file a case for IE, um, kidnapping for ransom case. Now, uh, he's now detained at the uh, AKG and then will be committed uh, later sa Angeles uh, Pampanga, ma'am. Bakit, uh, bakit recommitted sa Angeles Pampanga? Nan, meron ba doon kulungan o ba't doon? Doon po kasi nangyari yung crime, ma'am. So, doon do, po... Uh, sa presinto doon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Kasi, merong nauulat na more than 40,000 of these uh, illegal workers will now be deported. Di ba? Parang merong usapan na ganon. So, nasa na yung 40,000 na yun? Kasi, this is from my interview of this uh, victim... Uh, nagtatrabaho siya dito kasi nirecruit siya galing sa isang probinsya sa China na pangakuan ng magandang trabaho. At totoo, mas malaki ang sweldo nila dito ikumpara sa sweldo nila sa China sa maliit na probinsya. 100,000 pesos ang average na kinikita ng pogo worker dito di umano. So ngayon, mas gusto niya na manatili dito illegally than to go back to China. Or any other country. Kaya, ang tanong ko, yung sinasabi, magde-deport kami ng 40,000 or more individuals, nasaan na yung mga yon? Hindi ko sinasabi na i-deport ninyo agad, no? Sinasabi ko lang, alam ba ninyo kung nasaan sila o puro lang ito salita? I think, ma'am, that's for the Bureau of Immigration to answer. Yeah, immigration? Sir? Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chairman and distinguished senators present in this uh, committee. Um, Mr. Chairman, the 40,000 pronouncement of the Dep Secretary of uh, Justice uh, was based on the assumption that uh, for every uh, company, uh, assuming there's a 200 uh, personnel, so that totals to 40,000. And recently, uh, based on the um cancelled cancelled the uh, license uh, ng pagcor posted sa website po ng uh, pagcor uh, totaling total of uh, 
214 companies, ma'am. Uh, we were able to um, 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 list uh, 48,762. So, uh, sir, if I'll cut you, um, if you don't mind. I just want to make sure that I have this right. You're just making a calculation, but you don't actually know where those individuals are at this point. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. So maganda lang yung statement na magdi-deport tayo ng ganito karaming individuals, but actually, di natin alam kung saan sila. At masasabi ko rin na marami sa kanila magtatago na. Um, ngayon, sabi ng, thank you sir, sabi ng PAGCOR, that uh, last hearing that they will cancel the licenses of uh, Sean Way and Lucky South 99. Na-cancel na ba, Pagcor? Uh, Ma'am, hindi pa po na-cancel yung license ni Sean Way and ni Lucky South 99 because uh, we are still awaiting the reports ng, uh, I think, AKG, ma'am. Because yung sinabi lang po nila is that uh, they were, uh, they just mentioned that uh, there were incidents. So we are conducting our own Sir, investigation, ma'am. Siguro naman nagbabasa kayo ng jayo, nanunod kayo ng balita, di ba? Ano pa bang kailangan na ibigay sa inyo so that you will proactively act or you will proactively do something about it? Diba? Eh kung hindi pa pala pinapadala sa inyo, eh ba't hindi ninyo hingin? Obvious naman na may ginawa silang pagkasas, pagkasala. Uh, yes, ma'am. Cancel na ninyo. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ano, like iintayin pa ninyong matapos ang kaso? Oh. Uh, eh napaka-obvious naman na mayroong mga, na, mga nakadetain doon against their will. Parang alam mo, ang nakakalungkot dito, parang walang, walang kumikilos pag hindi pa napupuna dito eh. Nakakagulat na bigla ngayon may mga aksyon na nangyayari. Pero pagka hindi na tayo nag next week, Mr. Chair, wala nang mangyayari. Ngayon, Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Um, you had a representative here the last hearing uh, reporting that there were about 50-something incidents of kidnapping within a span of 10 days alone. What is your general position about allowing POGOs to operate in the country? Um, may, Mr. Wilson Flores, or yes, yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, I, by another org, it's FFCCCII. Oh, uh, that, that too, sir. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Senator. Uh, they asked me to read their statement. Uh, I'd like to read the statement. Is it long? Uh, very short. Okay. Mga okay. One minute. Uh, thank you, Senator. I'll look for it here. It's very short lang. Um, ayun. Um, this is from Federation of Filipino Chinese Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Inc. Uh, magandang hapon. Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson, Sherwin, uh, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, and the other senators here. Um, on behalf of FFCCCII, uh, thank you for inviting the organization to this public hearing uh, to listen to views. Uh, according to FFCCCII, uh, the organization categorically states that it is against illegal or unregistered POGOs, the presence of their employees, uh, who are in the country without valid government permits and visas. All POGOs and their employees, whether Filipinos or foreign citizens, must follow the laws of the Philippines, regulations, obtain all the necessary permits, pay correct taxes and fees. Illegal POGOs must be closed and their alien employees deported. Uh, ang sabi nila, uh, it cannot be denied that the pogo industry has brought some economic benefits to the country, uh, like revenues to coffers of government through fees taxes, some employment, increase in demand of commercial and residential real estate, plus consuming goods and services uh, which cater to them. However, on the other hand, it is 
really deplorable that crimes and illegal activities related to POGOS are increasing and these have come to adversely affect not only those involved in that industry, uh, whether Chinese or foreigners working there, but also many Filipinos. There have been reported incidents of abductions, forced labor, prostitution. Uh, thank you, Mr. Flores. I, I think I get the gist. I appreciate um, uh, yes. you reading the statement. The gist is you are against illegal POGO operators, not necessarily against POGOs. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, and, is that and, also the same, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And last sentence, siguro, sabi lang nila, uh, whatever is the decision of our senators and the leaders now, uh, they will support uh, whatever is the decision on the fate of the POGOs as long as the goals of peace and order, social stability, and economic prosperity for all are met. Okay. Yun ang the main thank, thank you, sir. How about um, you, Mr. Mr. Ang? What, what is the position of the Chinese Chamber, Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce? Thank you, uh, Senator Grace Po. Uh, I, I, on behalf of the Philippine Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, we would like to first thank the committee for uh, uh, allowing us to, to shed light on the uh, uh, POGO operations. Uh, as far as the chamber is concerned, since we are a business um, uh, organization, our, more con our main concern is the peace and order situation of the country, wherein when the peace and order situation is, uh, uh, is good, then uh, the uh, tourists will come into the country and as well as investors and investments, uh, they would be uh, coming uh, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a, uh, more than uh, what we are experiencing now. So as far as the uh, POCO operation is concerned, we will leave it to the wisdom of this uh, honorable committee as well as the government agencies to evaluate whether the economic gains of POCO uh, will outweigh the uh, uh, social uh, problems that is being generated. But uh, one thing that we want to say is that, uh, that after the September 15 uh, hearing by the Honorable uh, Senator Pato de la Rosa here, uh, we have noticed that with the quick action of our law enforcement agencies, particularly the uh, various agencies of the PNP and the NBI, uh, peace and order has greatly improved. And uh, lately, for the last uh, two weeks, we have not received any more reports on abductions and kidnappings. So uh, we would like to congratulate the law enforcement agencies uh, and we hope that they will continue uh, the effort to uh, make sure that the peace and order situation is under control and uh, so that the tourists will be uh, willing to come and, uh, and the investors will come also as well. Thank so you, that sir. is our position. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. In fact, what we've learned here and also uh, asking the opinions of uh, other financial advisors, uh, economists, it's really, can our law enforcement handle this type of industry? Kaya ba ng mga polis natin talaga yan? Kaya ba ng NBI? Kaya ba ng immigration? Kasi kung kaya nila, wala tayong problema sana siguro sa punto na ito, pero parang hindi natin nakakaya, parang mas makapangyarihan sila eh. Dahil mas marami silang pera. <laughs> Yun yung totoo. At yung pera sa kanila madali. Madaling makarating. Now, um, uh, Mr. Lee Chu, I have, I have a question. This is a phone-in question. Um, you know, a lot of our employees here are tenants of uh, condominiums. And so they're asking, since uh, the resurgence of POGOs here in the country or the entry of POGOs, how many of the regular renters were actually priced out? What was the increase in rent? From the time the POGOs came in, when when was that? 2016 yata? 2015? Uh, they, they, they expanded in Manila uh, in uh, 2017 in a meaningful way. And uh, they did push up prices 
for uh, many properties, not just the residential sector, but um, that I, I don't think that, and, and the answer to your question is it's about two to three times. And so two to three times, so if you're paying 1,000 pesos, 3,000. But y yes, ma'am, but, but, but that's, uh, that's not mutually exclusive, meaning many locals uh, rent different properties from the Pogo sector in general. Uh, in the office sector, there is no, there is no, um, in the office sector, there's no, no choice between, uh, there, there's no, there's a very clear distinction between the Pogo tenant and the non-Pogo tenant. What's the distinction, sir? <clears throat> if, if you're a Pogo tenant, you will basically pay two times the rate uh, arbitrarily, and that's because of the of, of all the complexities of taking on a POGO sector. See, and, that's, that's exactly it. It's high risk for the landlord, but, right? But, but it is not crowding out or blocking out the other tenants in the building. Um, what, what I mean by that is uh, it's not a function of market. And uh, the ones who are priced out are people who, uh, in, in the residential sector, are the ones who probably have been renting these properties for a very long time at a very low base because of the lack of demand for these properties. And uh, the function of just the lack of demand is what's depressing prices. Um, now, but because there are more... And there are enough supply to satisfy these tenants. And the more there is demand, the more supply is being created by the market. Okay, but... Uh, right now, don't you think the real estate sector industry is quite strong still, right? It is, uh, it, it, it is quite vulnerable, ma'am. Uh, and if I may just elaborate that, there, there are 15 risk items that the world is going through right now. And the next 12 months for the world will probably be worse than what it is today. Much, much worse. In the last 30 months, we only had to deal with one risk element, which is COVID. And today, there are 14 other risk items that are, I could call them tornadoes. We can call it typhoons. There are basically 15 typhoons brewing around the world that is making the Philippines very vulnerable. Now, I, I, I might have, I, I, I've said before that uh, the morality, the social cost, th that, that, these things are beyond, beyond my, uh, my scope of competence. But... I think what I am pleading to to our leaders is that we have to consider the timing of shutting down this this sector that admittedly is significant in our economy. Um, I, I say significant because, frankly, a very large chunk of the Philippine economy is is informal, and the, because it is opaque. It is very hard to appreciate on paper the real contribution of these sectors, of these industries, not just the Pogo sector, but all these other industries to the economy. The best benchmark I can give is that as many people know, uh, the tax efficiency in the Philippines is less than 15%, even after all our efforts. VAT collection efficiency is less than uh, 11, 12%. And we have a long way. Uh, the opaqueness in the POGO sector is not isolated to the POGO sector. It's applied across many industries. But there are other sectors like the business process outsourcing, which I feel is a bit more, actually a lot more transparent. A lot of them are uh, run by credible companies that actually have uh, shareholders to report to. So it's easy to track what they make and uh, what, uh, they remit to the government. Am I correct? And and they are very formal. M most of them are formal companies. Uh, they are very well known multinational companies. So it's very easy to track. But also in the beginning of the BPO sector, in the early, uh, in the late nineties and early two thousands, there were just like what we're going through today in the Pogo sector. There are a number of illegal operators that tried to set up in the Philippines, and we successfully stamped them out. It was probably easier before because the baseline was very small. 
Um, and that's why after... But, but the nature of the business of the BPO is obviously really different from y yes. the POGO operations. Um, sir, actually, I just want to bring out the point. Ha? Ang alam ng ating mga kababayan dito sa POGO, uh, illegal gambling, I mean gambling, no? online gambling. Pero actually po, nanganak na yan. Meron na silang call center ngayon. Uh, siguro alam ito ni Senator Tulfo. Yung call center or BPO ng mga POGO, ganito na yung ginagawa. Pag ikaw ay tumaya, no, na foreigner na tumataya, bibigay mo yung information mo, yung e-wallet mo. Yung information na yan, kinukuha ng mga POGO operators at ginagamit para scam ka. Kasi alam na nila information mo. Alam na nila yung siguro credit card number mo o kung ano. So, nanganganak talaga itong ano. Kaya, na, na, kaya kailangan. Ito yung isang tanong. Huli na lang po, sir, bago ako magpa-ubaya. Um, yung PNP at DILG for solving cases and surveillance, magkano ang nagagastos kaya ng mga ng government resources natin para matrack lahat ito? And before I yield the floor, um, and maybe in the second round if, if it's still possible, I, I would like the, the Bureau of Immigration to submit to us a copy of, if you know the whereabouts of these individuals, just give us a statement. Um, how many, in what percentage of them do you actually know where they are, uh, what's what's the status of these illegal uh, uh, workers here in the country? And for AMLAC, A M L A M L C, can you tell us, submit to this body, how having Pogo operations, legal or illegal, is harming our reputation and keeping us? Is it affecting our stand, uh, our uh, position, and keeping us in the gray list? Just submit to the body, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, please submit to the committee uh, the, the said documents. Thank you. The next on the list will be Senator Villanueva, but he's not around. So, Senator De La Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> to PNP. After our last hearing, uh, last uh, September 15, ba yun? I think, oh yeah, September 15, uh, what is the improvement about this and order uh, situation as far as Pogo related uh, uh, crimes are concerned? Gumanda ba? Lalo bang sumasama? Or, uh, ano, please give us an update. Can I uh, answer your question with uh, statistics? Please, uh, go ahead. Although I have, I can, oh, I can, I have here the uh, a table on uh, uh, statistics on our crime rate, uh, which. Uh, eh, na lang. Yes, sir. After tayo naghiring, meron bang nangyaring kidnapping pa? O meron bang nangyaring patayan? Pogo related? After your intervention, I think in CRPO, you, you can answer this, uh, uh, RD in CRPO. Ano yung ginawa or, yung intervention at ano naging resulta? Uh, sir, uh, yes sir, magmula nun tayo ng hearing sir, as of today, walang insidente ng kidnapping sa Metro Manila sir. Ito yung mga intervention na ginawa ko sir. Una, uh, nagdagdag kami ng uh, nag- uh, Focus kami, sir, sa genuine police visibility, specifically sa entertainment city. Second, nagdagdag ako ng mga outposts sa area. More on crime prevention kami, sir. Second, sir, pinatawa ko lahat ng mga involved ng Pogo, kinausap. Then, pati rin yung uh, mga counterpart namin sa like uh, Immigration, PADCOR, pinag-usapan po namin, sir, parang workshop po ang dating. Pinag-usapan namin na kung sakali man na magtuloy-tuloy ito at ang issue pa rin ay kidnapping, ano ang mga gagawin namin. Yan po ang nangyari, sir. 
Okay, uh, Region 3. Uh, good afternoon, sir. For uh, Region 3, sir, uh, after our uh, meeting, sir, uh, we have not noted any case of POGO-related uh, incident. So, we have met with the POGO operators. We have sir, we require them to nakumuhas na national police clearance as an uh, initial preventive measure, sir, para malaman namin, sir, kung... Yeah, yeah, on that, on that, on that no i would like to congratulate you for that uh, uh, best practice that uh, you introduced uh, maganda yung kinalabasan noon please continue yes sir and uh, also sir uh, we have uh, close one pogo operations in uh, angeles kasama uh, po si SLG, sir with uh, uh, certification from pagcor nito sir ay Cancel na yung permit niya, sir. Okay, so zero. Zero crime after yes, our uh, last hearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Region 4A. Good afternoon, sir. Just like uh, in, in NCRPO and in Region 3, uh, there were no uh, reported cases of kidnapping or illegal uh, detention except for two in Calabarzon. Uh, that is in uh, particularly in Songma. A U.S. citizen, uh, nagtanong po sila kung uh, house the, uh, the uh, kalagayan nung uh, uh, the one employed in uh, the one in Bacor. And, uh, and uh, a complainant that was referred to uh, the uh, Calabarzon PNP, particularly Bacor, ng, ng uh, AKG because uh, allegedly these were illegally detained. And so these were uh, checked by uh, the concerned Bacoor DNP in coordination with the uh, Pogo operators in Pogo operator, particular Pogo operator, which is Swangma, Swang, Swangma. Uh, so these were eventually released and uh, uh, napadala na po or uh, these were... Uh, 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 nakuha na po nung uh, kanyang uh, alleged girl, uh, girlfriend or complainant. And so, aside from that, uh, uh, wala pong problema sa Calabarzon or uh, incident just like before we uh, met uh, like uh, kidnapping and so on and so forth. And uh, the good thing is uh, the good coordination between the different agencies as well as the uh, law enforcement agencies uh, in fact, we have our uh, meeting. Uh, the only problem is, uh, kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng problema is yung pagka meron tayong uh, cases like this in Calabarzon, hindi namin kilala kung sino yung mga POGO operators, legal operators, as well as the uh, uh, employees. So now, there are about, uh, about 6,000 uh, foreign nationals na nakuha na na po natin ng biometrics through National Police Clearance and coordination with the different uh, um, uh, agencies, Your Honor. So, thank you. So, for the record, NCR, zero. Region 3, zero. Region 4A, zero. Crime incidents, POGO-related crime incidents after our hearing. So, next question. Uh, what cost did it uh, bring to the government? Yung efforts ninyo, yung additional efforts na ginawa ninyo, anong cost? What cost that does it entail to the government? Magkano ang gilastos ninyo? Pag-deploy ninyo ng kapulisan, pag-conduct ninyo ng operasyon, magkano ang gilastos ninyo para lang tumahimik at uh, gumanda ang peace and order ng uh, ating bansa pertaining to POGO operations? Meron kang uh, pictures? Uh, Magkano ang gastos nyo? Sir, actually, ang meron lang ako dito ng record, sir. Pag may mga nangyaring mga kidnapping, uh, more or less, ang per capita cost niya, sir, is gumagastos kami ng uh, 17, more or less 17,000 pesos. So itong mga ginagawa natin ng mga police visibility, uh, mga foot patrol, uh, mobile patrol, motorcycle patrol yourself, 
wala pong condolence na uh, sila charge ko po yan sir sa MOE ng uh, PMP. So in effect, hindi ito nagdagdag ng additional government cost. Hindi, hindi ito nagdagdag ng additional cost po. to the government. Yes sir. Dahil kung hindi niyo dinideploy yung mga polis niyo diyan sa mga pogo areas, sumisildo pa rin itong mga polis nito, may gastos pa rin, di ba? Yes sir. Oh. Kung hindi niyo sila dinideploy diyan sa pogo areas, Ito mga polis ito kumakain pa rin using their subsistence allowance. So no additional cost to the government. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, ang kailangan lang pala is police visibility at uh, correct uh, police deployment in these uh, Pogo areas. Yes, sir. Sir, can I... Uh, actually, sir, kung ano nga mangyari dito sa discussion natin na to, kung halimbawa ang Pogo ay matigil, Eh, siyempre, masaya ang PNP. Dahil he, wala na kaming trabaho, sir. Pero kung tuloy-tuloy ang pogo, sir, eto, sir, nagawa ko na. Mga 34. Para makatulong po sa inyo, sir, kung magawa kayo ng registration, nandito na po, sir. Ginawa ko ito, nung ako yung anti-kidnapping before. Pero hindi, hindi siguro, na, hindi na pakinggan yung aking, kaya ulit yung ngayon, sir, ibibigay ko kay uh, Senator uh, We will get silence, sir, for, para may copy po kayo, sir. Nandito na po lahat, sir, yung solusyon. Kung sakaling tuloy-tuloy ang pugo, nandito lahat, sir. Para po makatulong po, sir. Thank you. I follow up a question lang. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. This might not be the uh, position of the PNP, pero kasi madalas ko naririnig na this is an enforcement problem, both from a regulator standpoint and also from the peace and order Uh, enforcers. So, gusto ko tanungin ni mga kapulisan natin, baka si, Mr. si General uh, Estomo makasagot dito. Kung kayo ho tatanungin, you know, kung kayo po si General Bato, you know, Senator ho kayo, gusto niyo ba ho, ang anong re-recommend ho? Ituloy ang Pogo o ihinto ang Pogo? Kung kayo po tatanungin, bilang mga police enforcers, kasi madalas ko naririnig enforcement problem ho to. Eh, hindi ho nahuhuli yung mga kawatan, hindi ho nahuhuli yung mga kidnappers. No? So gusto ko ho tanungin ho sa inyo. Personally, uh, sir, maging plastic naman tayo kung ayaw namin natin ang revenue. Alam nga namang meron naman talagang revenue na makukuha dyan. So ang, ang suggestion ko lang, sir, since may revenue, of course, pag uh, merong mga business, Asahan natin, meron din krimen. Kasi, sige, sige, huwag, huwag mo na isipin yung revenue. Huwag mo na isipin opo, yung krimen. Yung personal, so, dito personal, na ako sa chairman. personal ko, sir, na mga suggestion. Ito, sir, marami, sir, eh. 34. Hindi ko nabasahin, sir. Bihin ko na lang kay sir, ito. Okay. Ito okay. yung tanong ni Mr. Chairman. Personal, eh, ikaw, as a police officer, or RD, naging sir, PO, gusto mo ipagpatuloy ang pogo o iban na lang? Gusto ko, sir. Bakit? Kasi, anong gusto mo? Pagpatuloy. Pagpatuloy. Kasi, siyempre, makatulong sa bansa natin na, uh, sir, maraming, uh, ano po, maraming trabaho. Kasi, sir, hindi lang naman ito, ano, nung nakausap ko yung mga program na yan, maraming mga, mga Pilipino, sir, na nakikinabang na kinukuha sila, ano, sir, empleyado rin ng Pogo. Kaya naman yung ibang mga, ano sir, uh, kaya may mga puntang insi, kasi nga, bago ng Pilipino, ang claim na uh, nila is China, at ang uh, mga Chinese din, sir, parang gano'n. Okay, th thank you for that. So maganda sir, uh, maganda naman lang po, sir, uh, ano lang. Ang sa amin lang dito, o ka, ah? ang sa amin lang dito is, yung ginagawa ninyong ngayon, na zero pogo-related crime incident, can you sustain that? all throughout hanggang uh, may pogo operation sa Pilipinas. Kaya nyo yan? Gaya na sabi ko sir, noong una meeting, uh, bilang original director ng Lutma Manila, uh, we try my very best. Pero sir, siyempre, tawal lang tayo. Natutulong din tayo panisan-nisan. Uh, punti lang ating resources. Pero pag may nangyari, gagawin namin ang tungkol yan para mahilin yung mga ginawangan. Noong lang kasi, sir. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat sa sagot mo. So, peaceful na ang Pilipinas. Wala na problema sa Pugo. Peaceful na. Sir, 
nagkatangang sunag sa kayo sa mayo na bayo man doon nangyari July hindi naman talaga karit yun sir eh sila po sabihin na rin para lang sabihin na may nangyari ganyan para maalala naman taong bayan pero sa putro lang sa akin sir sa akin parang ano parang sa butahe nga dating eh meron na nalang butahe sa butahe oo sir kaya sa tingin ko naman we can handle kahit anong hindi yung kidnapping kahit anong krimen sa Metro Manila. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, immigration. Ano, kaya ninyo? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, to share some inputs, Mr. Chairman. Kasi ha, kasi ha, sorry natin, kung hindi nyo kaya kontrolin ito, talaga kami dito sa Senado, we, wala kami pikialam kung hinto natin yung pogo na yan. Either way kami. Kaya nga, nagkaroon tayo ng hearing para to come up with the Uh, very fair and uh, very objective uh, uh, conclusions and recommendations. Kaya, tatanungin kita kayong kaya niyong ma-maintain niya kasi kayo mo ng enforcement niyan. Kaya? Um, kaya, sir. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we can I share the position of the Bureau of Immigration? Yes, yes. Right. Sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as a law enforcement uh, agency, the Bureau of Immigration maintains that um, immigration laws must be strictly followed, and uh, so as our domestic laws. Uh, the POGO entities lawfully licensed to operate or with valid license and clearances that comply with immigration laws deserves BI efficient service. However, on the other hand, Mr. Chairman, POGO entities who violate immigration laws should be penalized, sanctioned, deported, and blacklisted. Yan po yung position ng aming Bureau, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can I ask uh, NBI, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Attorney Dilemo, sir? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. The, the same uh, question, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the NBI will uh, do its level best in enforcing all uh, laws relating to criminality in uh, relation to POGO operations. Uh, while we have very limited resources in, ter in terms of our manpower personnel, we have been up to the job in uh, going after illegal POGO operations. We will do our very best as an agency to go after illegal POGO operations, sir. Thank you, sir. That, that would be all on my part, Mr. Chairman. Salamat. Thank you, Thank you uh, Senator Bato. I also recognize, uh, oh, let me recognize um, Senator Angara, who's here with us, and also Senator Sito. Uh, good afternoon, sirs. Uh, next on the list will be uh, Senator Padilla, but he's not uh, here. And then Senator Tolentino. Uh, he's also not here. And Senator Bongo, who's virtually uh, present. Senator Go, are you still there? Wala naman po, Senator Pimentel, the minority leader. Ay, Senator Tulfo was ahead of me. Are, are oh, sorry. Are sorry, sorry. Senator Tulfo, sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I Thank you, uh, Senator Pimentel. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Una, I would like to put it on record, and I'm, I would like to congratulate uh, General Junel Estomo. Medyo out of topic to. <clears throat> Kasi nga po, si General Estomo, nasolve niya po yung sumbong na nakarating sa akin tungkol po sa isang uh, vendor na hinulit up yung kanyang motor. Uh, todo din na yung police na wala rin siyang kinalaman doon sa hulit up. Pero bandang huli, eh, nung iherap kay General Estomo, ay napilitan yung polis na irisole yung motosiklo at nagbigay pa si General Estomo ng pera doon sa biktima para doon sa uh, nawalang, uh, nawalan siya ng sweldo dahil hindi siya nakapagtabaho. General Estomo, maraming maraming salamat. General Estomo, sir, you're a very efficient uh, police officer and I really thank you. And also, I'd like to thank the NBI kasi nung meron kaming kaso sa Palawan, yung nawawalang uh, working student, na solve po ng NBI. Again, NBI is a very efficient law enforcement agency. Thank you both gentlemen. Now, yung akin pong katanungan, <clears throat> ay didarik ko po sa DOLE at saka sa BIR. DOLE, 
Do we have uh, a representative from uh, Dolly here? Meron po ba tayong representative ng Dolly? Meron po ba? Meron? Virtual, okay. Sabi po rito sa inyong record, 2019, 123,000 uh, Chinese employees versus Filipino, 20,000. And then forward na tayo sa 2022, 17,509 uh, Chinese empl uh, employees, mga workers sa Pogo versus 16,736 na mga Pilipino uh, workers sa Pogo. Ang tanong ko po, uh, Dole, ito ba yung properly submitted sa, N sa, sa BIR? Ito pong listahan ninyo. And then BIR, ang tanong ko din sa inyo, ito hubang 17,000 uh, Chinese uh, Pogo workers and then 16,736 Filipino workers sa Pogo. Sila hubay nagbabayad ng buwis. Kasi kahit na Chinese national sila, dapat po nabibigyan niya ng alien employment uh, permit. So therefore, they should be paying uh, uh, taxes, uh, income tax sa atin. So nagbabayad po ba? Nandito ba yung Dole and uh, BIR? Let's start with Dole first. Yeah, dito po. Uh, Dole? Dole yes, and BIR? Opo. Okay. Correction po, i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-i-
Chinese uh, poco workers coming from China. Sana man lang yung Filipino workers natin, abot man lang sana ng 50,000 kahit kalahati man lang. Pero ito, nilang paso tayo, ang layo. 100,000 versus 10,000? Ba't ganun? O 15,000? Dole, ba't ninyo mo na monitor to dole? Ba't kayo pumapayag? Mr. Chair, we actually... Oh, sandali lang po, sandali po. Sabi kanina ni BIR... Uh, hindi niya alam yung mga exact amount. Dapat malalaman niyo po ito. Dapat may record kayo. Di ba pag nag-file ng income tax, nakadeklara doon kung magkano yung sweldo, magkano yung binabayaran based on the income tax, magkano yung gross pay nila. So now you're saying you don't know? Uh, wala, po ta uh, uh, wala po lang pong datos ngayon na hawak. Pero yung sinabi ko pong amount for the foreign nationals because under the Pogolo po, the law presumes that the salary is uh, 50,000. Kaya po ang kinakalpas sa kanila na final withholding tax is 12,500. So kahit po mababa ang sweldo po nila sa 50,000, ang kaltas po ng, ng natin ng sweldo nila is 12,500. Sabi niyo kanina, ang sweldo is 12,000. Ngayon sabi niyo, ang kaltas is 12,000. Ano ba talagang totoo, kuya? 12,000 uh, ang sweldo o 12,000 ang kinakaltas sa sweldo? Ako yung nagbigay ng amount na 50,000 ha. So, hinira mo sa akin yung 50,000 minus 12,000. So, meron silang uh, 38,000? Uh, ano po, ang kinakaltas po sa ano is 12,500 minimum. Ah, kinakaltas. Opo. Okay, kasi ang gusto kong malaman, sir, kasi tinitimbang ko eh, uh, patas ba ang trato sa mga Chinese pogo workers uh, as opposed to yung Filipino pogo workers? Okay lang sa, atin, sa akin kung mas malaki po yung sa Chinese uh, pogo workers dahil sila po ay marunong mag-Mandarin at in-import pa sila from China, etc. Pero dapat medyo malapit-lapit sa katotohanan kasi sabi ni Senator Grace po, meron siya nakausap na pogo worker from China na dumating dito. 100,000 na po ang sinesweldo. So therefore, kung 100,000 sinesweldo nila, eh dapat malapit-lapit din dyan ang sweldo ng mga Pinoy na pogo workers. At least man lang, sabi ko, 50,000. Pero kung sila binibigyan ng minimum wage, eh hindi po patas yan. Dapat po malapit-lapit man lang sana. Diba? Yan po, dole, trabaho niyo po yan para masiguro na tama po yung pasweldo sa ating mga kababayan dito na patas. Hindi po ba? Tama? Tama po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, pwede po ako mag-ano ng uh, isang ado lang po. Uh, Sige po. Our data. Opo. Kasi po, uh, in our application for AAP, we require the foreign national to declare po yung kanilang uh, salary. So, ito po yung salary range na nakuha natin sa mga applications and based din po ito sa employment contract. Uh, we, we actually uh, depend on the, the, on the, on the ano po, uh, declaration po nila dun sa contract wherein yung sa sinabi ko po na 23,587 kanina, 23,183 or 98.29% po ay sumusweldo ng 30,000 to 59,999. And that would also include na po lahat ng benefits like yung pong kanilang board and lodging, ang kanila pong pagkain, nakasama po doon sa konsulta. Only 270 foreign nationals po or uh, uh, na-issuan po ng ating atin ng AEP Ang sumusweldo po ng 60,000 to 89,999. And then, for the salary range of 90,000 and above, only 128,000 lang po, ah, 128 uh, foreign nationals lang po ang nagdeklara ng ganitong sweldo po dun sa kanilang kontrata at sa kanila pong AAP application. Yun po. Okay, ang gusto ko lang kasi point out dito, dapat po, yung mga Chinese pogo workers and Filipino pogo workers Dapat pantay-pantay po ang trato, pantay-pantay po yung pasweldo habang maaari. Kung hindi man, at least man lang malapit sa katotohanan, huwag naman po yung sobrang layo, milya-milya po yung diferensya sa pasweldo. Kasi po nakakahiya, nakakataway. Sa salin natin bayan, inaapi po tayo. Yung maliit ang tingin sa atin, yung mga pogo operators, maliit pong pasweldo sa kanila versus pag yung mga galing China, mas malalaki, parang mas mataas ang tingin sa kanila. So that's why these pogo workers, nagmamayabang pagdating dito, sinisipa-sipa lang tayo mga Pinoy, ayan, sa harap-harapan natin, gumagawa ng krimen. That's what I'm trying to point out. So dapat po, you make sure na maayos po ang trato din sa ating mga pogo workers. Tama? 
Or kung po, Sir Senator, ah, ganit, ang gagawin po namin sa Department of Labor and Employment, kapag po nag-inspection po ulit kami, magtatanong na, uh, ipag-ano na rin po namin yung mga salary po ng mga Filipinos na nagtatrabaho po sa Pogo. Okay. okay. And last na lamang sa pagkor. Nandito ba yung pagkor? Pagkor, trabaho po ninyo. Yes, sir. Mag-monitor. Mag-monitor. Uh, sa mga pogo workers na yung mga umaalis, yung mga napapirate, yung mga nag dapat properly inform lahat ng authorities para yan po ay madisseminate yung information na yan sa dole para makansila ang kanilang employment permit sa immigration, uh, sa BIR, para ma-blacklist na rin sila pag sa immigration. Fail to do so, eh, yung uh, yung pogo operators na hindi gumawa ng ganoon dapat makansela yung kanilang permit. Now I wonder kung yan ay ginagawa. Baka hindi ata ginagawa ng pagkor. Ah, uh, your okay. honor, kaka submit lang uh, kaka release lang po namin ng memo na nagsasubmit po ng dapat mag-submit po sila ng complete manpower list and pag nagkaroon ng changes within five days dapat sabihan po nila kami. Uh, as of today, 100% naman po ang compliance nila na nag-submit ng complete manpower list, pati nag-appoint nag, na rin po sila, nag na rin po sila ng security compliance officer na makikipag-usap po sa AVP of security namin with regard sa mga uh, security and activities or information about illegal online gaming rin po. Okay. So, compliant na po kayo. Lahat po ng mga Pogo workers from China na nag-resign o napapirate o nag-awol o muwi na, yan po ay pinapasa nyo yung information na yan uh, sa DOLE at sa immigration? Yes, at, sir. Or, or should I say, yung pong operator pinapasa sa inyo and then kayo pinapasa nyo sa iba't ibang ngensya ng gobyerno at kayo po'y gumagawa ng regular inspection? Kasi sa balita ko po, mukhang hindi. Uh, ang sandali lang, bago ka po yes, kang magsalita. In fact, may balita ako na yung PNP at MBI, kapag gumagawa ng monitoring, gumagawa ng inspection, pinagbabawalan nyo, pagkor, ba't nyo pagbawalan yung PNP at saka MBI kung mag-inspect doon sa mga uh, facilities ng uh, POCO dahil sa tingin po ng NBI at ng PNP, eh, meron ng nangyaring kalokohan. Ba't nyo sila pigilan? Anong meron? Uh, sir, according to our Compliance Monitoring Enforcement uh, Department, wala naman po raw nangyayaring ganun. Walang nangyaring gano'n. Yes. Eh, meron lang kami nakausap na PNP noon. Uh, sabi niya, hindi lang niya mapanggit, pagkor, pero may tagapigil tao. Eh, gusto lang gawin ng PNP yung trabaho nila dahil nakatanggap sila ng intelligence information na merong illegal activities ang isang pagkor operator, okay. ang isang facility ng pagkor, pagpupunta nila para mag-inspection, mag-serve ng uh, uh, visitation, inspection. Uh, base po sa reklamo, eh, pinipigilan na po ng Uh, your Honor, hindi naman po nangyayari yun. In fact, may mutual cooperation agreement nga po kami with PNP, NBI, Bureau of Immigration, DOL, and even DOJ po na magtutulong-tulungan po kami para maayos po ang operations ng mga POGO po. Very good. And very last, uh, meron po kayong hinire na auditing firm to audit uh, POGO. Uh, if they are paying proper taxes. Yes, Your Honor. Auditing firm. Okay. Um, you must submit uh, records uh, sa PAGCOR para makita kung kailangan pa ba kayo talaga ng PAGCOR. Kasi you're being paid half a billion pesos. Is that right? A year? 500 million? Napakalaking pera po yan na ibinabayad sa inyo. Ang tanong, without you, ubra ba yung APOGO? Pagkor, kailangan pa ba natin itong uh, auditing firm? Without them, gagana ba o hindi? Kasi kung gagana kahit na wala yung auditing firm, eh bakit pa natin, bakit pa tayo magbayad ng 500 million peso? Sayang lang yung binabayad doon. Hindi uh, ko ba? Actually, Your Honor, may respectfully manifest po, uh, wala pong binabayad ngayon po sa current audit firm ngayon. Kasi meron po kasing uh, stipulation sa kontrata nila na kapag hindi po sila nakasingil ng more uh, aggregate amount of our 
minimum guaranteed fee, wala po silang makukuha. Ah, so, ibig sabihin, hindi silang nagbabayad. Eh, na, na, nakalagay sa kontrata, oh, uh, whether kumita o hindi ang Pogo, ang gobyerno, ang pagkor ay magbabayad, babayaran po yung 500 million pesos kada taon. Nasa kontrata po yon So, ibig sabihin, pwede sila mag-renig doon ah. sa kontrak. Amen. Uh, Your Honor, Pwede I think that... sa contact yung, ano, yung PAGCOR? Your Honor, that that stipulation is already amended, Your Honor. Amended na. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na binabayaran itong mga auditor? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Hindi na po sila nababayaran. As long as hindi sila umaabot sa aggregate amount of our minimum guaranteed fee. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The Senator Escudero. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, let me preface my um, questions and manifestations by saying that I am against anything illegal, nefarious, or not in accordance with law. And hence, I take a position against all illegal pogos and any legal pogo that may be violating the law. However, insofar as proposals to abolish pogo, I am yet to be, I'm, I'm, I'm reserving judgment until I am convinced by those who are against it that indeed the so-called social costs outweigh the, um, the benefits that the country gets. So may I address my first question to Pankor. Sir, pwede bang magsugal ang Pilipino gamit ang Pogo? Yes. Uh, hindi po, Your Honor. Bawal. Yes, Your Honor. My next question, sir, is Pogo is not a territorial gambling. Meaning, walang sugal na nagaganap dito sa Pilipinas. Yes, Your Honor. Can you correct this statement? There are three elements of gambling. A bet, a game of chance, and settlement of payment. Would that be correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Without one of the three, it's not gambling. Yes, Your Honor. Do any of the three occur here in the Philippines? No, Your Honor. Then why is it under Pagcor? Uh, because there was an issuance uh, under... I know there's an executive order, I agree. Yes. But my point is, is it gambling technically and in the true sense of the word if none of them occur in the Philippines? The bettor is not a Filipino. The bet is made outside of the country. The game of chance is somewhere in a cloud. And the settlement of payment is done outside of the country. Correct, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Compare that to a casino. The bet is made in the country. Diba? The game of chance is in the country. And the settlement of payment is also in the country. So clearly, it's a game of chance. It's gambling being done in the country. Would that be yes. a correct statement, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Are Filipinos allowed to play or play a game of chance or gamble inside Pagcor casinos? Yes, Your Honor. They are allowed. What would be the percentage of Filipinos gambling in our casinos compared to foreigners gambling in our casinos as of today, as of this year? Uh, Mas marami ng Pilipino, di ba? Yes, sir. 70 percent. So can we ask similarly, Mr. Chairman, the DOF, to conduct the social cost analysis or study they made with respect to casinos? Where Filipinos are actually spending the whole night until, until the wee hours of the morning. Um, in that casino, so that we can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Because if we will come up with a policy with respect to gambling in the country, then we should be consistent across the board with respect to all games of chance. So if the DOF is still here, may we get that report or submission in the next hearing? Kindly compute for us the social cost of casinos in relation to the income, revenue generated, and benefit to GDP that casinos are um, generating. Ma'am, are you still with us? The representative of the DOF, ASEC. Um... Mr. Chair, we will submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, ma'am. Next, um, may I ask the BAR, after 11.590 was passed in September of 2021, did our revenues from POGO increase or decrease? Uh, sir, it increased. Com it increased. Compared to the, to the last year, yes, sir. Even with the number of POGOs decreasing, the revenue still increased because of the higher taxes imposed. 
um, by RA11590? Uh, yes, sir. We're, uh, I'm comparing to it with the previous year. Yes, sir. Exactly. Even with a lower or lesser number of POGOs, still the revenue increase. Yes, sir. You are correct. And um, you're expecting it to continue to increase until the end of the year, unless more POGO stations are closed down. Uh, that, sir, is the assumption. Yes, sir. Now, in relation to PAGCOR and BID, um, 18 POGO outlets closed down in 2022, from January until, I think, June or July. Is that correct, sir? Mm -hmm. Sir, 18? Sir, just a minute. From January to June 2022, 18 Google outlets shut down. Oh, 85 minus one. Yes, yes, Your Honor. 18? Yes, Your Honor. 85 Once a Pogo outlet shuts down, what happens, sir? Is the license cancelled? Uh, it will really depend if they requested for the cancellation of their license or if the license is still valid. If they requested for the cancellation of the license, it will be shut down already and the, cance the license will be canceled. What if they shut down and did not ask for the cancellation of the license? Would the license still be subsisting? Can it be transferred? Nag shut down eh? Uh, it could be revived, Your Honor, if they shut down without can canceling it yet. Now, what happens to their workers? These are issued alien employment certificates. Eh, wala na silang kumpanyang pinagkatrabawan. How would you now consider and classify them from the point of view of PAGCOR before I ask the BID? Uh, they are no longer uh, POGO workers, Your Honor, since uh, the operation have shut down already. Um, may I ask the BID, are they now illegal aliens, sir? Um, are their AECs automatically revoked? Um, thank you, um, Your Honor. Uh, pagka ang, ang mga employees po ay lumipat sa ibang uh, kumpanya, that's already a, a violation of condition of stay. They're already illegals. Pero pagka nag-stay po sila sa company, sarado na uh, ako yung company, eh. company uh, they are not authorized to work. Uh, Mr. Chairman, so it's uh, they should be considered as illegal. No? And what is the BID doing about this? We know for a fact 18 have shut down. Do you even have a list of the employees of these 18 Pogo companies that shut down from January to June Palang of 2022? The figure given by our SOJ is based on the total number of Pogos that shut down, which is multiplied by 200, thereby coming up with an amount of 40,000. Now, insofar as these POGO outlets are concerned, at 200 times 18, so you're talking about 3,600 since January up to June, what is the BID doing, if any, with respect to identify, search for, arrest, and deport these people? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, recently, po, nag, uh, nakakuha kami ng list because uh, we, we usually act on the information related to our bureau. Uh, we have 200, 214 companies um, tagged as uh, closed or uh, licensed or revoked. So, nung tinignan po namin sa database, it came up uh, na mayroon 40, 48,782 employees, foreign nationals under those companies. 140 companies with employees and the rest wala pong laman. So, what the commissioner did... He already he, he issued already an immediate cancellation of all the 48,782 uh, visas of those uh, employees, including the alien certificate of registration cards. Para po yung mga cards na yon hindi na po magamit as a as a means of identity and uh, ma present po sa mga government uh, entities. Thank you. And correct me if I'm wrong, sir, under our present laws, the Bureau of Immigration has an authority to effect arrest even without a warrant. Um, Your Honor, In we so have... far as illegal aliens are concerned. 
Thank you, Mr. Uh, Your Honor. We have a mission order um, na ginagamit po namin uh, to check and arrest um, aliens sa hindi po residential places. So when we have a case build up and we have to implement arrest, we use the mission order, Your Honor. So the answer is you do not need an arrest warrant. We need a mission order, po, uh, Your Honor. But you do not need an arrest warrant issued by the court. Yes, Your Honor. Parang customs lang naman yan eh. Wherever an illegal shipment can be found or may be found, you can confiscate it and arrest whomsoever without a search warrant, without an arrest warrant. Would that be correct, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Um, with AMLAC, why are we on the gray list? Are we on the gray list? Or are we in danger of being on the gray list? We are on the gray list, Your Honor. Why are we on the gray list? Uh, because uh, there are some action plans that need to be uh, complied with as uh, mandated by the uh, FATF, Financial Action Task Force. I heard POGO being mentioned as one of the reasons. So what are the other reasons that we are on the gray list? What would be the number one reason why we are on the gray list? For supervisory purposes, uh, it's actually the uh, supervision of uh, law firms, lawyers, and accountants that are mentioned, but not, but not what we already satisfied them as far as the focus is concerned. We already took action, examined 27 focus, and uh, canceled registration of six uncooperative court focus. Um, sir, my question was, what's the number one reason why we are on the gray list? Because you cannot monitor lawyers and accountants. Uh, most of the uh, uh, action plans that were not yet uh, completed because of uh, implementation tends to terrorist, terrorism financing. Mostly. Sir, I used to chair um, the Committee of Banks in the Senate, and I dealt with AMLAC on several occasions. Again, so number one, why we're on the gray list is because we cannot monitor terrorist financing accurately or effectively. Would that be a correct statement? Uh, it's more on the implementation, Your Honor. I agree, but they give a list. They give a list of reasons why we are in the gray list. So can you give me that list? Ano ano yung mga rason na kailangan natin gawin ng paraan para mawala tayo sa gray list? One, as you said, terrorism financing. You mentioned earlier lawyers and accountants. What? More on uh, investigation and prosecution, Your Honor. Where do Inclu casinos and pogos come into play? As a reason why we're on the gray list. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, we already satisfied uh, the FATF or the evaluators as far as uh, POGO supervision is concerned, Your Honor. So we're already supervising it adequately, and that's not one of the reasons anymore why we're in the gray list? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Lee Chu, sir, I read your report. Um, to be brief about it, you cited real estate, um, loss in annual tax, housing rent, fit out cost, daily spending, um, income tax, bad course revenue, loss of employment. If we shut down POGOs tomorrow, the 35, um, the 35, the 35 POGOs and 128 service providers. How much will all of a sudden stop flowing into our economy peso-wise? Um, <clears throat> Your Honor, our estimates are somewhere around 170 to 200 uh, billion pesos. 172 to 200 billion pesos. And that's comprised of uh, different, different parts. Uh, a big chunk of it is the real estate market, both in the amount of office being rented and amount of residential condos being rented. And the and the big chunk in the service sector, because the un, the uh, the informal economy is significantly employed by this sector also, and a lot of that uh, a lot of that 
uh, money flow is not um, captured. In so far as foreign exchange revenues is concerned, did you plot that too? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. The foreign exchange revenues plowing into the country. Uh, no, sir, because it's it's even more opaque. But yes, they are a significant contributor to uh, to foreign uh, from foreign direct investments. So just the top two, sir. Um, real estate and housing. How much would the figure be? Um, they would they would comprise about almost a hundred hundred billion. And the net effect to your mind to the to the um, office leasing sector would be what? Uh, close to sixty billion. I'm sorry. Yeah, close to sixty billion. Close to sixty billion. Yeah. What would be the net effect to the property sector? Uh, you will see uh, investor sentiment um, become very negative very quickly, and property prices on both rents and capital values will be impacted, and all of us will be negatively impacted by that. By all of us, meaning everyone. I read somewhere that um, the lease contract signed in favor of Pogo companies um, lasts for 10 or 15 or 20 years. Is that correct? And even if they close down because of COVID, because of the pandemic, that the rent is still um, in effect or effective. Is uh, that an on, accurate statement? Uh, on, no, Your Honor. Most of, most of the contracts are between 5 to 10 years long. However, what is unique about this industry is that they prepay the advance rental by as much as three years, and they give deposits of as much as one to one and a half years worth of rent up front. So whether they close down or not, yes, and they're being charged at significantly higher rents than anyone else. Um, one last point, um, Mr. Chairman. Would it? I don't know who can answer this, um, but ah, the Bureau of Immigration, do you have any ideas how much fees you collect from um, foreigners employed by Pogo? Do you have your figure, sir? Um, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, from 2017 to 2022, August of 2022, the Bureau of Immigration collected um three point some three point four uh, billion more or less and uh, this uh, collection um was uh, deposited to the national treasury uh, your honor my figure sir is three point seven five billion um I, i'm we're very sorry mr chairman but uh, there's a, a correction and uh, i have to relay to this committee that it's a uh, 3.469 thank you and the discrepancy would be in what year sir it's broken down by year since 2017. Uh, your honor uh, 2017 it should be 28 000, not uh, 68,000. Sir? So it's uh, on the year 2017, Mr. Chairman. Sir, my figure for 2017 is 413, 413 million. Not 68,000. Um, just a minute. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the year 2017, um, for the SWPs, it should be 28,000, uh, uh, 22,000, I'm sorry, but the, the numbers uh, submitted was uh, 68,376. So that's why it's uh, it, uh, the figure. Uh, Sir, I'm talking amounts, uh, not people. Eh? I'm talking amount. Um, the discrepancy of 277 million now, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. So 2017 is wrong. It's not 413 million. Yes, Your Honor. It should be. Uh, Submit it to us, sir. I don't want to belabor the point. Thank you, Your Honor. To our law enforcement officials, particularly the PNP, um, um, I commend you, as pointed out by um, Senator Bato, that you have 
done your job the past two months since the hearing was um, conducted. But a curious question was asked earlier, and I'm also curious. Can you actually unbundle how much we spend whenever we do anti-criminality operations for a particular sector, such as Pogo or Casino? I'll give you an example, sir. General Estomo earlier said that the low or zero incidence was because of increased patrols, increased outposts, increased presence, especially in those areas. But do you only protect Pogo workers or any Filipino foreigner or person that might be located in those areas that a crime may be committed against him or her? So is there even a way of unbundling how much we're spending in so far as KFR cases for Pogo, KFR cases for casino related, KFR cases in general. Can you unbundle the cost of that? Your budget is the same anyway. Whether KFR incidents are occur or not, your budget is the same. And every year, no ubus nyo rin naman yung budget nyo. I don't know who can answer, sir. Earlier, kasama sa cost kasi, um, cost of Pogo. So there are 22 KFR cases related to Pogo before for casinos. There were 35 earlier in that year. In 2016, there were 45 KFR-related cases for casinos. Can you unbundle how much we spend for these KFR-related cases to certain forms of gambling? Uh, natulog ba yun sa barracks or nandoon sa Pogo area, nagpapatrolya, kinakain nila na pera, kinakain nila na subsistence allowance, the same, naka-fix yan. So I, I think that there's no additional cost on the part of the government, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bato. One last manifestation, Mr. Chairman, before I terminate my interjections. Um, I would like 
to look at it holistically. If we admit that gambling is indeed a social ill and it is not sustainable revenue-wise or as a practice, then we should look at all forms of um, gambling. Again, to cite um, by comparison, sa Pogo, walang Pilipinong pwedeng magsugal, baka may nakakalusot. Sa mga kasino natin, 70% Pilipino ang nagsusugal. That's why I asked from the DOF, ano nga ba yung social cost din naman ng kasino para makita natin saan ba mag intersect yung dapat nakitain ng gobyerno para malunok natin na may mga Pilipinong nagsusugal. Kung may KFR, kasino man o Pogo, kung may krimen, kasino man o Pogo, um, umabot ng 45 sa isang taon lamang ang KFR ng 2019 kung hindi ako nagkakamali na casino related o 35 cases. But nobody raised a howl with respect to um, the social cost. Baka naman kasi malaki yung kita ng kasino. So I wanted to get the figure from the Department of Finance. So ano ba yung dapat natin kinikita para masabi natin, sige na, okay na to. Ano ba yung dapat na bilang ng krimen para sabihin natin, ay hindi na pwede to kasi ganito lang kalita ang kita eh. Um, if we are to compute the social cost and the advantages and disadvantages of um, a particular form of gambling, which is admittedly bad um, under any um, moral standard, then we must have a barometer or measure by which to um, say that it is or it is not. And not merely based on emotions. I saw the videos too with respect to Pogo-related crimes. And it is indeed disturbing. But then again, I'm not one to decide based on mere emotion. I would rather decide based on um, data. That's why we're asking that data from the Department of Finance as well as the Bureau of Immigration as well as from the Anti-Money Laundering um, Council, so that we can look at it holistically. Isabong was there for a while, and it pervaded almost every aspect of daily life. And nobody really talked about it until the president um, said he doesn't want it. Um, STL is still there. That's a totally new investigation all to itself. When, ilang ba yung ako? Ilan yung nanalo na may factors of nine yung ano? Um, that's a totally different investigation that Senator Pimentel might want um, to look at. And that is also government sanctioned. Um, so I hope the committee will juxtapose any and all forms of gambling against each other, find a standard by which we can use and measure if it is indeed advantageous to still keep it or not anymore, and not simply base it on a harrowing video that we saw, all of us perhaps saw, on TikTok or on Facebook. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Thank you to our invited guests. Maganda hapon pa. Thank you, Senator Escudero. Next will be Senator uh, Joel. Joel Avilinueva. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry that uh... We have to uh, go from one place to another here uh, conducting our uh, budget hearing for uh, the Department of Health. And uh, we have raised so many important issues in the, in the process. when we were in the House of Representatives, this representation has been consistent with its stand on the issue of gambling. Since then, Your Honors, we have been uh, raising that particular issue as to how the state would uh, uh, consider gambling as a policy. For example, Mr. President, PAGCOR is not just a regulator. PAGCOR is an operator. Perhaps it's the only, we are the only uh, country in the world na merong state regulator slash operator. Okay, it's about time we look into it. And again, I've been consistent, Mr. Chairman, ever since I was a member of the House of Representatives, ever since I was a member of this August Chamber. We have been consistent with ISABO. We have been consistent with the, what's that, the lotto, the, 
uh, tubol, uh, whatever that is. I, 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 I'm not a gambler, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Just to put on record that we have been here, we've been around for quite some time, and uh, we really need to look into this uh, policy, Mr. Chairman, as to what kind of policy are we really espousing in this uh, 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 administration uh, or as a state policy when it comes to gambling. Mr. Chairman, may I ask if we have invited some friends from uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, if they are around? I have a question to date how many Filipinos are working in POGO or POGO-related industries. Uh, may we uh, be... Uh, um, updated with, with these figures, Your Honors? Yes, po, Mr. Chair, uh, and our Senator. Uh, we get also for our data on the Filipinos employed in the POGO po from PAGCOR. And based on the latest data that we had uh, from them, 19,745 po. Um, sorry, how many? Sorry. 19,745 po. As okay. of September 15 po. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, am I correct to state that uh, Dole has the sole, um, sole power to actually issue these alien employment permits? Is that correct? Yes, for your honor. Um, what steps are undertaken by the agency to determine uh, that there is indeed no available person in the Philippines who is competent, able, and willing at the time of uh, application to perform the services for which the alien is uh, desired, uh, Your Honor? Actually, uh, uh, Honorable Senator, we conduct what labor market test. And we issue, uh, before we issue the AEP po, we publish the application for AEP ng foreign national. If there is someone who would object with the application, then the, our the regional offices will hear po yung kanilang objection. And as a matter of policy po, when we had, a, uh, when we attended the hearing before uh, in the Senate and also at the House of Representatives, we actually adopted po yung recommendation ng House of Representatives and the Senate to uh, to strengthen po yung aming labor market test. In fact, our Department Order Number Two Two One Series of Twenty Twenty One, we already require um, companies to also post the vacant their job vacancies na intended po for the foreign nationals, and we also require them po to uh, to submit an under uh, an affidavit that no Filipino actually applied for the said position. So, Thank you. na po yung ating uh, uh, requirement po sa kanila. Aha. Salamat po. Pero siguro dito sa bulwagang ito, tinitignan ko kung ilan po tayo dito. Ilan kaya sa atin dito ang nakabasa itong publication na ito na na merong available uh, work for our uh, fellows, for our kababayans because sa uh, data from PAGCOR shows that as of September, September 19, 2022, out of the 34 POGOs licensed to operate and 130 service providers, at least 14, 14 entities employ Filipinos below 10% of its total workforce. Nung pong naghiring tayo, Mr. Chairman, I will, I will mention the corporations. Zero Filipino workers employed. Ito po yung customer relation service providers. These are Crimson Tulip BPO Incorporated, CGC Technologies, Tech Mave Services Incorporated. Zero po ito, Mr. Chairman. Wala hong Filipino workers employed. Um, tatanong ko po, no? for example, sa PAGCOR, during our hearings that we conducted before, Every time we ask, kasi introduce na nga po itong offshore gaming uh, employment licenses. And I admire yung mga pogos na lihiti mo. Kasi eh, sumusunod po sila eh. Meron po silang order. Pero yung iba po, lahat po ba meron ng offshore gaming employment licenses? Uh, may we ask uh, from PAGCOR about this uh, issue? In relation to our license pogos, 
almost 75% po yung ano na natin, compliance rate natin with regards sa uh, offshore gaming employment license. So 75% license na po yan, Mr. Chair. License na po, 75% lang ang nag-comply. Pero ilan po yung hindi lisensyado? Do we have any idea? Can someone here give us a bird's eye view as to how many are not licensed and operating? Kasi madalas sa PNP, pagka nang huli po sila, sasabihin, ay, wala palang lisensya to. Ay, nakakalungkot pa kung inuhuli nila, may lisensya pala. Meron palang uh, permit from PAGCOR. Meron hubang makakasagot nun or wala po? Ang PAGCOR po ba may idea kung ilan yung hindi lisensyado? Uh, wala pong wala po kaming idea. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, it's just that, again, there are 34 POGOS license to operate 130 service providers pero 14 entities lang yung nakaka-employ ng uh, kababayan po natin no now uh, sir from Pagcor how many ODELs have been issued by Pagcor yung binabanggit niyo pong 75% ilang ilang empleyado po ito sir after uh, fraud 75%. Yes. How many employees, sir? Uh, we have that. So, sir, around 30,000. Around 30,000. So, you don't have the exact figures, but around 30,000. Uh, yes. Yeah, that, that would suffice. Sir, how many employees have been reported by POGOS and other required entities as having been terminated. Kasi kanina, binabanggit yung uh, data, bumaba na yung um, uh, uh, employees, foreign nationals. No? Pero bumaba din yung mga Filipinos na being employed. I wanted to find out how many employees, I hope yung party line na ririnig tayo, tigil muna sa party lines, <laughs> favorite ano ni Senangara. How many employees have been reported by POGOS and other required entities as having been terminated for just causes and the reasons for such termination? Meron po ba tayong, uh, I'm sure meron tayo niyan na data? Sir, I'm currently retrieving the data right now. Okay, please take your time. And perhaps, uh, Tignan natin yung monitoring system that uh, PAGCOR is uh, uh, implementing because uh, we wanted to help you kung kailangan ng tulong para ma-monitor natin gusto ito. Dahil ito yung nagiging problema natin. Eh, no? Sinasabi natin, yes, nandyan, nandyan na sila. So, paano gagawin natin sa kanila? Uh, kung may hina yung ating institusyon para o mahihina ang ating mga batas para i-regulate ito, then we do something about it. And that's what we did when we passed uh, Taxing Pogos last uh, Congress. Do we have the data, sir? Sir, not yet. Sir, we're just... Sige. Uh, I'm willing to wait uh, and not belabor the issue. But may I ask again, what is the reason for the 75% uh, Compl compliance rate because we have been pounding on this issue for quite some time, for years, Your Honor. Since uh, 2019 pa po natin require okay. itong OGEL, 2022 na po kasi. So, ano po kaya yung uh, dahilan? Uh, sir, because uh, when the OGEL was passed, biglang tumama po yung pandemic, nahira upan rin po sila to get the requirements oh, at the same time dun sa training. Come on. Program. Sorry, Madam, Mr. Chairman. Masyadong gas-gas naman yung uh, pandemic. Sir, very, so, no? Two, three years po ito, sir? Three years? Uh, anyway, I hope you can uh, just submit to the committee what, what PAGCOR is doing as our state regulator of the country. Yes. So I hope we can get that from you. And may I ask if there are penalties for non-compliance, sir? Yes, Your Honor, there are penalties for non-compliance. Can you give us a bird's eye view? What would that be? For example, there are a uh, penalty for violation of our policies and uh, 
I'm just only asking about the OGL, sir, because you oh, said 75% oh, lang po yung yes, nakakomply the past three years that we have been... Uh, uh, and uh, dun sa penalties na binabanggit nyo, we wanted to find out how much have been collected, yes. sir. 10,000. 10,000 US dollars, sir. The penalty for OGEL. Or not uh, complying no. with the OGEL. That's 10,000. Yes. Per person po yan? Uh, sir, because our, what we did was uh, per tranche basis, for example, we started, uh, our goal is to the 100% uh, uh, compliance of OGEL by the end of the year. So every tranche, they are complying. Mr. Chairman, naiintindihan niyo po ba? Kasi ako hindi ko naiintindihan. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll wait for your submission. Baka pwedeng malaman po. Ito yung dahilan, Mr. Chairman. Eh. I don't know. I sound like a broken record. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit natin sinasabing tigil muna natin kung hindi natin kaya. Ganyan yung nangyari sa isabong. Do we have the mechanisms in place? Are our PNP ready for this? Our PAGCOR, our chief regulator, state regulator, ready for this. Now, under PAGCOR implementing guidelines on the issuance of OGEL and accreditation of training program providers, yung causes for termination include game cheating, fraud, and or estafa, theft, forgery, or counterfeiting, unlawful interference with the gaming equipment, Conviction of a crime involving moral turpitude, use of camera or any electronic device to assist in projecting outcome of the game, acts of dishonesty amounting to grave or serious misconduct. Ito, pwede, kahit isubmit na lang, no? Ilan yung na-inspect natin? Or are you doing the inspection? Do we have that me mechanism, uh, sir, ng PAGCOR? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. It's a regular uh, thing that you're doing? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our compliance monitoring enforcement department always monitors the okay. uh, proposed regulation. And you're in partnership with DOLE because we have established here that it is important that DOLE is the sole department agency of the government issuing alien employment permits. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And with the Bureau of Immigration, siguro, no? If, if, if ever. Thank you. Thank you. Let me move forward, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman. Um, sa PAGCOR pa rin, at present, how much is the total accounts receivable of PAGCOR from POGOS? Uh, can I uh, endorse you to our compliance monitoring? Sure, sure. Thank you. Please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, the total uh, POGO accounts receivable uh, is uh, 1.5 billion uh, uh, pesos, sir. Uh -huh. And uh, has the PAGCOR undertaken other uh, collection procedures such as for feature of per performance bond, cancellation of offshore gaming licenses, etc.? May ganun po ba? Yes, sir. And, how, and what is the agency doing to ensure the collection of these accounts receivable? Uh, sir, we are, uh, for every cancelled license, we are endorsing the same to our legal group or legal department for... Uh, uh, other appropriate means uh, to collect uh, the corresponding uh, regulatory fees, sir. Okay. Now, sabi nyo, no, 1.5 billion. Because based on uh, COAS management letter as of December 2021, <laughs> 2.328 billion or 78% of accounts receivables from POGO remain uncollected for more than 1... 1... One to five years, Your Honors. A total of 2.97 billion remain uncollected from POGOS. Ito ho yung nakalagay sa report. Now, while COAS management letter disclosed that out of the 2.328 billion aging accounts receivable, 815 million is being protested by POGOS. Uh, however, there remains 1.5 billion uncontested but yet to be collected as of December 2021. Would you uh, uh, concur with these figures, uh, Your Honor, from PAGCOR? Correct, sir. 
Okay, na lang yung... So, tama po yung, yung uh, report na binigay ng COA? Yes, sir. Yes. So, from December to October, wala ko kayong ginawa kasi nung pa yan eh. Yun ho yung binabanggit nyo kung tama ito. Uh, sir, that is uh, for the period covering perhaps the audit last week, ay last year, sir. Up to December 31, 2021, Your Honor. That's what I mentioned uh, a while ago. So that's what we're asking because it remains the same, the 1.5 billion that you're talking about. So we wanted to find out what you're doing. Again, uh, I'm just pounding on the fact that PAGCOR is our chief state regulator. And you have to represent our, our people. What is due to us? So since then, wala po. Kala ko meron tayong efforts to collect. Uh, yung endorsement po, sir, uh, to our uh, legal group, legal department ng mga canceled licenses, we are continuously billing them and... Um, uh, and uh, we continuously demand a uh, settlement of the arrears, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your answer. It's just that the records show that uh, that was December 2021, and as of today, it's October now, 2022, and it remains the same. Let me uh, go on, uh, Mr. Chairman, perhaps... Uh, I'm not going to uh, to stay long here, and uh, I would just ask our PNP, um, how many illegal operating pogos have been raided and uncovered by the PNP since its uh, its uh, operation? Pwede ho bang malaman kasi, I remember nung uh, hinear po namin ito, katakot-takot ho, yung listahan. At uh, nakakalungkot yung mga nare-raid na iba, mayroong lisensya pa ng PAGCOR, marami din naman na walang lisensya. So, yun nga po yung mahirap dito. Eh. Uh, binanggit na ng ating mga kasamahan, ito'y bawal sa China, bawal sa Cambodia, pero tayo pumapayag. And um, we, we, we cannot help by, but, but, but ask if the gains outweighs yung uh, social cost na ating uh, nararanasan dito. Sige po, PNP uh, representatives. Uh, sir, uh, the PNP has no record on... Uh, we don't have uh, today, sir, the record of uh, uh, raid that we have conducted in the past against uh, illegal operation of POGO. And uh, what we have now, sir, is uh, only POGO-related incidents pertaining to uh, violation of... Uh, Revised Penal Code, particularly on kidnapping, abduction, and serious illegal detention, and even uh, trafficking in persons, human trafficking. But uh, as far as we, I know, sir, as a former uh, commander in some units in Metro Manila, we, we were not uh, authorized to initiate operations uh, against illegal POGO before because... Uh, uh, Why is that, sir? Yes. I'm sorry. Why is that? You're you're the chief. You're you're, you're Philippine National Police. Uh, no, sir. It's not. We were not uh, mandated uh, as uh, as uh, operation. Unless there's crime, ganun yes. po ba yung sinasabi? No, sir. Uh, unless there is a a uh, request or directive from higher headquarters in coordination with PAGCOR. Sir, so para lang malinawan, yung sinasabi po ninyo, hindi kayo basta-basta pwede mag-raid ng isang PAGCOR operations unless may active uh, criminal activity. Eh, ibig sabihin, yung criminal activity like, uh, alam mo may illegal detention o kaya merong um, murder, yung mga ganon klase. Yun ba pag mga ganong klaseng uh, Ganong klaseng crime, kailangan pa ninyong i-coordinate yan sa PAGCOR? Uh, ma'am, uh, if there is, uh, what, what I'm saying ma'am is uh, purely illegal operation of POGO uh, with the PNP. Uh, in my experience ma'am as a former 
uh, commander in uh, units uh, because I've been uh, a former director of the Southern Police District. So we have not encountered uh, uh, our in our own initiative operating against illegal operation of Pogo. Ah, kasi para ganito yan siguro, Senator Joel. Uh, pag meron mga ganon, kunyari, may isang tao at talagang merong uh, liability sa kanyang taxes, hindi naman pwedeng puntahan ng police na walang BIR uh, authorization kasi hindi nila alam yung mga regulations na ganon. Kailangan masamahan ng ahensya. Kasi yung sa inyo talaga more like active crime, yes, pursuit, mga ganong klase. Yes, Pero pag alam ninyo may illegally detained, somebody's being forced against their will to stay in a particular cop, yun pwede kayong pumasok doon pag may tip kayo kahit yes, sir, no. walang sinabi yung pagcore. Okay, yes, sir, no. so nakita naman natin um, with your indulgence, uh, Senator Joel, itong pagcore, eh medyo natutulog rin sa pansitan kasi ano eh, uh, nakita, malaking news yon na uh, maraming na-rescue dun sa Lucky South 99. Tapos, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa pala nila nakakancel yung lisensya nun. Dahil daw, i-verify, pinasa pa sa inyo. Kasi hindi pa daw kayo nagbibigay ng, ewan ko kung anong kailangan nila from your group. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, Ma'am, after we, uh, after we, uh, did the raid a uh, few days later meron ng uh, meron ng cancellation po yung uh, Lucky South 99 that was the uh, uh, that was the uh, to po yung ginamit ni uh, SILG noon ma'am na pasara yung Lucky South 99 so pinasara pero sabi yes. ng pagcore hindi pa daw canceled yung okay. lisensya uh, your honor may manifest Oh, yes, please. Uh, Your Honor, may I manifest? Uh, yung address po sa Angeles is actually a cancelled site July 29, 2021. So it's a considered a legal operation already. So for our, kasi site-specific po ang PAGCOR. Once your site is cancelled, illegal operations na yun, if you have operations there. Uh, can you clarify something? I... I during the time of the past administration, I think they designated certain areas that can be the, the location of PAGCOR operations. If I'm not mistaken, there are only three areas, not, not more than five, right? Uh, Your Honor, okay. is that Pogo Hubs? Oh, oh, diba? Parang Cagayan is one of them. Uh, um, um, there's a Apeco and oh those areas. So oh. are you saying that they they now operate even the legal ones outside of those eco zones? Ah uh, yes, your honor. Yes. Yes, your honor. Uh there there are focus outside the eco zones. So one of the suggestions that came uh that that was conveyed to our office is what if they're uh, geographic specific, like there are only certain echo zones that can host them. Um, is this something that you considered? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Actually, uh, we had a uh, amendment in our offer gaming regulatory manual with regard to Pogo hubs. It's a uh, it's a location where the residents, the operations, and the all the auxiliary services for POGOs are already there. At the same time, it's a one-stop shop where there's a representative of Bureau of Immigration, uh, Dole, and even yeah. PAGCOR. Because so moving, be, yes, moving forward, this is something that might be considered by those that are saying that maybe we should give legal POGOs a chance. I mean, I'm not saying I'm for it, but um, in the interest of arguing both sides, uh, this is something that others are advocating. Put them in a contained hub uh, where they have their needs. But I would like to see how will now that affect the real estate market uh, of Mr. Lee Chu if they're... Uh, <laughs> you, you still have your office spaces that will be vacant uh, if they're in these hubs, right? Um, maybe you should invest in those hubs instead. 
But, what do you think of that? Yeah, Your, Your Honor, I think uh, it's a very artificial environment to enclose them in very specific zones. Part of the reason why the Pogo sector likes to locate in the Philippines is because they are almost perfectly assimilated to the local communities, whereas in the in the environment in, for example, the very first Pogo location in Cagayan, where zones uh, operations were not allowed outside those uh, the geography, it was very hard to recruit because everyone just lived in one very small geography. They ate in the same restaurants, ate in the same food. And if you do that over two or three months, people kind of go crazy. So I, I, think... I can understand that. Although, um, of course, our con I mean, I know what you mean because it's almost like it's a separate country. Like to go out, they, their identification has to be checked. But that's really not our concern if it's difficult for them to recruit. I mean, that's, that's their business, maybe a risk that they have to take if they want to continue operations here. And we also want to ensure uh, that peace and order is easily attainable. But um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our um, law enforcement because apparently in the past two weeks since the hearing, um, there's not that been there's not been that much of an occurrence. But um, if I can, I, I don't know. Uh, can I can I read the data? No, go ahead, go ahead. You, yeah, go ahead, continue. I will come back to this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, distinguished colleague. Let me just uh, go back. This is my last point that I'd like to uh, raise with our uh, Philippine National Police. Sir, you, you, you made mention a while ago about higher ups. Parang naguluhan. Doon ako na, na, na confused a bit as to parang you need higher ups uh, blessing before you can... Uh, do your thing. Uh, can you clarify your statement that, for instance, a raid call be conducted uh, must be coordinated with uh, PAGCOR and paano kung illegal yung POGO? Uh, kailangan, I mean, yung PAGCOR nga, yung legal, hindi nila alam yung, hindi nila alam yung uh, data eh. Yung pa kayang hindi legal. Uh, I just want to be clarified, sir, please. Sir, uh, what I mean is higher ups is higher headquarters because uh, for the operation of POGO, sir, we are not really uh, an expert about uh, knowing what is legal or illegal about POGO because we are trained to investigate crimes, uh, yung criminality, sir. But uh, POGO is uh, new to us and uh, we need to, uh, to seek the or it has to be PAGCOR to initiate. And other, and other agencies, for example, other Bureau agencies. of Immigration, Department of Labor and Employment. Yes. Am, am, am I correct to say, sir, that it is very important, the information, the accuracy and efficiency of information is very important on your end so that you'll be able to properly implement your duties and responsibilities as our policemen. Uh, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, and that's the reason, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you for, for helping this representation pound on it. Because hindi naman chismis yung naririnig nating pataya. Hindi ho chismis to eh. Hindi chismis yung human trafficking. Hindi chismis itong uh, kidnapping. Hindi chismis itong mga nararamdaman nating... Uh, na ating mga kababayan na takot kahapon lang Mr. Chairman kahapon lang nandun po ako sa area ng uh, dyan po sa may uh, City of Dreams kasama ko yung anak ko nakakita ako ng isang uh, uh, isang Chinese national na higit sampu yata yung bodyguards uh, hindi yan naka-civilian eh may mga baril etc so I mean I have to admit na takot po ako Sama ko yung dalawang anak ko eh. Ito, Mr. Chairman, yung binabanggit natin, paano natin masusukat yung halaga ng mga buhay na nasira ng Pogo, yung mga nabiktima ng Pogo, at nitong uh, gambling. Para po sa akin, walang katumbas na salapi ito, lalo na ayon din sa datos ng DOF, ang contribution ng revenues ng Pogo is 0.03%. 0.03% ng ating GDP. Tapos yung ating uh, NEDA kanina, binabanggit, 
nag-increase yung GDP natin ng 0.4% for the past years. 0.4%. So, Mr. Chairman, again, let me just close by saying it boils down to policy. Do we really want our country to be known as a tourism hub, a agri-tourism hub, or a gambling hub, a pogo hub? Nasa kamay po natin bilang policy makers ang uh, kasagutan sa mga tanong na ito. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Senator Joel. Next is uh, Senator Pimentel. At is si... Wala pa. Senator Angara. Thank you, Sir Chairman. Magandang hapon no sa ating kasamaan, Senator Majority Leader Joel, Senator Grace, at sa lahat ng uh, bisita ngayon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, natakel na ng committee ni Senator Bato yung peace and order. And again, I'd like to add my voice to dun sa mga nagko-congratulate sa PNP kasi parang tumahimik. Eh. So congratulations. Mukhang talagang nag-work yung crackdown ninyo. Uh, so yung peace and order, natakel na dun sa committee on uh, public order. Tapos yung arguments for on the morality, uh, the social effects, na pag-usapan na rin nila Senator Joel at saka ni Senator Grace. So I'd like to tackle it from a different angle, the, the money laundering uh, angle, Mr. Chairman. No? There is a uh, AMLAC, Anti-Money Laundering Council, Risk Assessment of the Casino Sector in the Philippines. Meron po silang uh, ginawang report nung 2020. So, I don't know if this covers the... I'll, I'll, I'll give a copy to you, Mr. Chair. This is from AMLAC mismo. So, mismo ang gobyerno ang nag-analyze nito. And the, yung lumalabas dito, mahina ang regulation natin. Uh, not necessarily of the casinos or the online gaming or pogo operators, pero yung mga service providers. Parang yun ang weak link na lumalabas. Uh, if I may read certain portions of it, uh, sir, Mr. Chairman, no? uh, suspicious activities primarily relate to the transactions of SPs, service providers of internet-based casinos. Several transactions involve individuals with no clear connections with SPs or service providers. Internet-based casinos and their SPs may be using money service business accounts for Forex transactions. Highly substantial forex transactions appear in the transactions of service providers. Some of, ito po, Mr. Chairman, ang mabigat dito sa report. Some of the service providers have a nexus with previously identified entities alleged to be beneficiaries of fraud and drug-related money. So, yung conclusion po ng study, in 2020, na ginawa ng AMLAC or Anti-Money Laundering Council, generally, POGOs pose a lesser threat compared to their SPs. So, ang sabi niya, ang bigger threat are the service providers. Uh, PAGCOR and AMLAC supervise POGOs, which are subject to the AML, Anti-Money Laundering, CFT, Covered uh, Transaction Framework. In contrast, PAGCOR does not technically license SPs but merely accredits SPs to provide technical and operational services to POGOs in relation to gaming and gambling operations. So that's the conclusion number one. Pangalawa, there is a low level of beneficial ownership identification, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman. So if we look nga, pag tinignan nga natin yung datos na galing sa PAGCOR, they gave us a list of uh, uh, makapalto na uh, there are 340 POGOs, service providers, SCBPOs uh, involved in the industry, which I suppose they regulate. Pero kung titingnan mo, walang beneficial owner, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. No? Walang pangalan ng individual. Panay korporasyon lang. Eh pagka may illegal na ginawa ito, pwede ba natin habulin yung ano? Because corporations can uh, close up, you can reopen and uh, start a new corporation. Sa Securities and Exchange Commission, Mr. Chairman, eh, you're required now, which is a new requirement from a few years ago, ilalagay mo na yung beneficial ownership. Ibig sabihin, pag merong uh, incorporator or stockholder na holding that in trust for a beneficial owner, ibig sabihin, hawak na yun for you sa totoo. Abogado man lang siya or ayente siya. Hawak niya para sa totoong may-ari. Required siya under oath 
to certify under pain of perjury. So why don't we ask all of these guys? Kasi nakikita ko, maganda yung na nangyayari ngayon eh. Sumisikip po or uh, gumaganda yung regulasyon sa hanay ng polis. Uh, siguro sa hanay ng peace and order, public order uh, officials po natin, Mr. Chairman. Pero sa hanay po ng financial regulators natin, ng, ng gambling regulators, nag, 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 uh, uh, are we doing our best? Or, or is, are, is there room for improvement? Yun ang tingin ko. And I think in, in, uh, with respect to PAGCOR, with respect to the AMLAC, there's a lot we can do. Based, and and the, the information mismo comes from AMLAC, from this report of theirs. So again, there is a low level of beneficial ownership identity. Why don't we require them to state who is the real owner of these uh, companies? No? Uh, there's a high number of unregulated or unsupervised SPs or service providers. As SPs are not within the realm of AML CFT supervision, they are prone to abuse and exploitation by criminal organizations. In 2019 alone, local authorities mm. closed down around 200 internet-based casinos and service providers that illegally serviced online gaming operations. In the same year, the local government seized the operations of one of the largest SPs for an internet-based casino. So yun po, ang recommendation po nila, tatlo, increase the level of AML CFT effectiveness of compliance and supervision. Number two, enhance coordination and enforcement actions. Three, increase the level of AML CFT awareness, risk assessment, and outreach. So, sa, ang hihingin ko, Mr. Chair, eh, eh yung police nag-deliver na ho, eh sa AMLAC at saka sa PAGCOR, uh, whatever our decision is here, whatever the President's decision is, whether mabubuhay o mamamatay itong industriya natin, eh, kailangan natin maghigpit sa tingin ko. Kailangan natin maghigpit. At uh, one of these is to uh, itong uh, covered transactions, suspicious transactions, e eh, mismong AMLAC na nagsabi, may link na to, to drug personalities, to illegal operations. Eh, why do, let's ask for action. How can they, kasi covered na yan ng latest amendment to the AMLAC law, eh, anti-money laundering. So, hingi na natin na eh, higpitan naman nila yung ating regulation, di ba? From PAGPOR's point of view. Eh, huwag naman itong bibigay yung dokumento sa amin na panay korporasyon lamang. Sino talaga yung mga tao na behind this, di ba? Sino ba yan? Eh, sino nga habulin namin kapag may illegal na nangyari dito? Uh, and uh, just to hingin ko na lang po yun, Mr. Chair, because uh, we are looking for long-term actions here. Uh, there's definitely a need for stronger regulation. My next questions I'd like to address to uh, my friend, David Lee Chu, who's my schoolmate from uh, uh, Savior, uh, and he's the acknowledged expert here in the, the real estate industry. Sir, uh, thank you for your report. Uh, you mentioned a 567,000 uh, loss in employment. But the figures, where, 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 what's the basis for those uh, figures, I'm wondering? And what types of jobs are these? Thank you, Senator Angar. Um so, so that's all based on the footprint that they occupy today, that they're paying for today. And uh, the premise there is that they wouldn't be paying for them if they're not populating them. And uh, based also on the traffic that we see in, in these buildings that are still currently occupied. Um, there's also a very significant indirect employment uh, that is not uh, found in the buildings or in the premises. So. These are so it's uh, direct and indirect in five hundred. Uh, direct and indirect, okay. and uh, they're they're predominantly in the service sector. Okay, because the data of PAGCOR and ang Dole, actually the Dole gave us data which came from PAGCOR, is that there are two hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred uh, individuals, both foreign and Filipinos, working in Pogos and related establishments. So I suppose direct employment lang ho yon. Uh, I, I would I would assume so. Yeah, but you're saying there's another three hundred plus thousand who are employed in indirect employment. Uh, yes, and 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 there's also the possibility that there's still a gap between the you know the the registered and unregistered um, people. Yeah. Do you agree with the DOF's uh, assessment that there is a reputational risk in allowing Pogos to operate in the country? Uh, I. I I, I don't really, I, I can't comment on that competently, sir. Uh, well, I was thinking since you deal, I know you deal with a lot of multinationals, you go abroad. How about the reputational risk in 
drastically reversing policy. Meaning you allowed it one day and the next day you, you wake up and you say, well, I want to shut it down. Is there a risk there? Uh, definitely, the, the risk would be quite significant. Oh, we, we've seen it in the first time that we changed, uh, we changed policies in the early to 2020 when we imp imposed a new set of taxes on, on the POGO sector. That, that was quite dramatic and is the primary cause of the decline of the POGO sector in the Philippines. I'm just saying that because I've been in public office since 2004, Mr. Uh, Chairman, and the issue then, uh, and I think in my first or second term, was the reputation of the Philippines was severely damaged, especially in Europe, when we uh, abandoned the Fraport. Do you remember that? Uh, the, the airport, no? So, and then we, what followed was the abandonment of the North Rail project, uh, and then also the contract with the uh, the Belgian, I think the Belgian. Uh, although this, many of these uh, contracts were controversial. The dredging, yes, many were known to be controversial because of the uh, alleged or, or or the purported graft and corruption. No, but whether we like it or not, natamaan tayo, tinamaan tayo ng mga episodes na yon. So I think we should be conscious about uh, when we make a decision. It has to be well considered. It has to be sober, and uh, considering all aspects. No, so definitely, maganda itong pagdinig niyo, Mr. Chairman, at nailalabas niyo po yung lahat ng aspeto. So yun lang po. Uh, can we have stronger regulation of the sector, especially from Pagcor uh, and from AMLAC? Because nakita niyo na po yung mga butas at kayo ang eksperto jan. Eh. So pag hindi niyo no, hindi niyo tinatakpan po yung mga butas, eh, mahirapan ho tayo. So I think. I think yun lang po ang sasabihin ko for now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Angara. Uh, Senator Pimentel, is he still in the building or? Baba siya? Wala na. So, uh, I'd like to continue with the other resource person. So, so we, um, uy, sige. So, um, we won't, uh, wouldn't waste their time coming here to the set. Uh, we'll call on Mr. Lichu because Lichu has been, uh, uh, mentioned, uh, was asked many times, and I believe you have a presentation, Mr. Uh, David. Um, you want to make uh, that presentation so it will be put on record? Uh, okay, okay, sir. Yeah. Um, th thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, we we have we we yeah, we'll class it. Thank you. Okay. So that uh, this was mentioned a few times throughout the hearing, and so it's good to put on, put it on record so that everyone will be uh, enlightened with this um, research. Well, um, ne next slide, please. I'd, I'd like to say that uh, we're, we're very grateful that uh, despite 30 months of COVID, the Philippine economy and the property market in particular has performed quite gracefully. Uh, we, we, as a country, we could have been hurt much worse, but, uh, but uh, be because of a number of very good uh, factors such as the remittances and BPOs and the infrastructure program of both the uh, President Duterte and President Marcos. The, th there's been a lot of positive momentum in this country that has insulated us from further damage from COVID. But like I mentioned earlier, the, there are 14 other storms that are going through the world. Uh, that's primarily the in global inflation, global hike in interest rates, global warming and the impacts of that to the economy, the uh, war and the impact of that, the commodities crisis that we're going through, the currency crisis that we're going through as a, as a, as a world, the, the banking crisis, mortgage crisis, real estate crisis that's going on in China and how that's going to blossom, the starvation and the massive poverty happening throughout the world because of global price increases and commodities crisis. The changes in leadership that are going to happen as a result of all these social issues. Uh, th th there's a very long list of things that are happening at the same time. And I, in my humble opinion, to, to, to kind of shut down the POGO sector as a very big segment of the economy today in the context of what is happening globally and how the global events will 
impact the Philippines negatively, we will become more vulnerable without the POGO sector than it being with us. And the social impact of that could also be quite damaging. Uh, I've lived through four or five major financial crisis, economic crisis in the Philippines. And uh, uh, despite my name, I am Filipino. And uh, I, 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 I do think if we shut down this sector immediately and, and uh, abruptly, the hundreds of thousands of Filipinos that do depend on it directly or indirectly will lose their jobs or lose significant revenue that are already significantly impacted by COVID in the last 30 months. And that in, in itself will produce more social issues. Uh, as we did see in 97 when the Asian financial crisis happened, as we saw in the 1983 uh, assassination and what, what transpired after that. So, um, yeah, so, so as we speak about the, the POGO sector directly, and I, I'm not sure how much time, we, we do have a number of slides, but, but the other concern here is how the POGO sector could help us insulating us from further damage from this economy because of the employment it generates and the number of, uh, of uh, money it brings to, to this economy. Yes, we can isolate it by just what it remits directly to both the uh, BIR and the uh, and PAGCOR. But I think to, to get a full appreciation of the impact, we have, to, we have to accommodate and consider the other aspects of the economy that are directly benefiting this, uh, uh, that, that directly benefiting because of the sector. And, we are indirectly taxing this POGO sector already because of that. Um, I, I just want to jump through some of these slides to stay in what is relevant. So if I can, um, if we can skip, um, skip, uh, skip. <clears throat> I just want to go straight maybe to the, the slides that, uh, that are the most important. This termination, so can we, can we stop first? Um, can we go back one slide, this one? Okay, this slide shows you in yellow the amount of office space that's terminated in the last 30 months of COVID. And the, the different colors below the yellow line would be red POGO, blue BPO, and gray corporates, everyone else outside the POGO and, and BPO sector. And you will see that the red line is really what drove the terminations of office space. What, what this means is uh, the tenants are contracting in office space. So before they had 10,000 square meters and now they only have 1,000 square meters. They give up 9,000. So that's happening all across the Philippines, all across different industries. The POGO sector drove that. They gave up 630,000 square meters of office space and possibly two times that of of uh, of uh, residential space now why why is this so important because the, the amount of terminations that dictate the sentiment in the market the more patents terminate the more negative the sentiment the more negative the sentiment the more impaired the velocity is of the economy the more positive the, the sentiment, more money flows through the economy. And because of the terminations of the POGO sector, rents in the Bay Area went from 1,700 pesos to now 700 pesos per square meter. It's probably headed to 400 pesos. It's going to hit to 300 pesos per square meter if we shut this down abruptly. The uh, every other industry, the, the, the BPO sector and the corporates continued to acquire office space throughout the COVID crisis of the last 30 months. And that is despite work from home discussions and that's despite the terminations that, the, that these, these sectors did in the last 30 months. 
So the BPO sector, the corporate sector are both net positive in demand, whereas the POGO sector has been significantly contracting <clears throat> next. Um, this chart tracks sentiment, the amount of <clears throat> transactions that companies want to do all across the Philippines as we see it, and we've been tracking it every quarter. You can see that in the last 15 months, the sentiment has improved dramatically to the point that we are not far from pre-COVID times. And a very large chunk of this is corporates, <clears throat> corporates in gray, and then the BPO sector in blue. And the POGO sector is minimal. It's not taking as much office space as it used to pre-COVID. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any, any changes to the sentiment will have a dramatic impact on the amount of volume of office space being taken down in the market. Next. Ideally, <clears throat> what is going to drive prices downwards? We, we are going through right now an, an, a glut in office space. There's more office space than there is demand. And the POGO sector has deferred this glut for four or five years, and it has kept business very positive. The impairment that the POGO sector alone has done in the last 30 months, has undergone in the last 30 months, has impacted sentiment negatively, and office construction work has come down significantly. Many developers are cutting down office space. Many developers are cutting down residential space. And we can ask ourselves, so what? Well, so what? Well, the property sector is the largest segment of the Philippine Stock Exchange. The property sector is the single largest industry of the Philippines. Okay? Any change in the sentiment of real estate impacts the entire country. And I think given that there are 15 storms brewing around the world today, that is definitely going to have an impact, a negative impact on the Philippines. I'm just pleading to everyone that it will benefit the Philippines by keeping, keeping this sector going for some time. Mr. Chair, um, thank you, Mr. Lee Chu, for your presentation. In fact, I use your, um, your reports as reference. When I was speaking to the Secretary of Finance, the current um, Secretary Diokno, I was also mentioning about the possible vacancies in uh, the real estate market. And he mentioned to me that, um, well, now rental is really higher. Well, as you said, it, it's decreasing, but um, in fact, because of inflation, he was saying if there's less demand on certain things, it might be more affordable for our countrymen. So there is a shortage, I believe, if I, if I can quote correctly, of about 5 million housing uh, for our for, for regular Filipinos. And the problem is actually for them to find an affordable place to stay. Now, there's there's even in, in other countries like the US, there's also been less demand on brick and mortar spaces, malls, um, office spaces, but they're finding new ways to fill that gap. My my only concern is that um, by by trying to stabilize it, to keep the the by, by trying not to spook the market too much. We are leaning heavily on something that I feel is a little bit risky socially. I, Senator Chise said you cannot quantify uh, these things. But, you know, when measuring, if I will paraphrase the quote of uh, RFK, he was saying, in measuring the GDP of a country, you cannot capture certain things like the feeling of security, uh, the feeling of uh, being able to have the same opportunities. Um, those 
emotional tendencies or those emotional judgments is really affected also by the environment that we create. Um, so I, I understand, of course, you're an advocate for your sector and any loss is still a loss that you would like not like to, uh, to burden investors with or the perception. But I think that it's, it's a different scenario when you're talking about why we are cracking down on a particular industry. If you are really diligent in reviewing the policies of a country before you invest, you will realize, oh, they're cracking down on that because of the criminal activities associated to it. I don't know if um, you're familiar with the situation in Cambodia where they, they allowed Pogos to operate in an island. They were isolated. I think it's called Nara Island. But within that island, crime grew, um, uh, multiplied so many, I mean, increased that the government thought it best just to cancel or to do away with that industry altogether. It wasn't worth their social risk. And the GDP of Cambodia, compared to the Philippines, it is actually lower pa than the Philippines, so GDP per capita. I mean, they can do it. I think we have more opportunities here. I, I don't really see why. Maybe in the short term, it might be a problem. But in the long term, I think that if we find creative ways to find investors to fill the gap, I think it won't be so bad. And, and especially with your portfolio, um, I, I think you think we're really that desperate? Um, your Honor, it, it's probably not a matter of desperation. Um, the issues with Cambodia and comparing that to the Philippines is very different because primarily the reasons why Cambodia decided to, to for a time, expel the sector is more politically driven and the government and they were in a game of bluff, which the government called and the, and the sector left and that's why they're being courted back in well, Cambodia. So it's not crime, it's political. It's more politically driven. Why is that? Why? Because the... Administration there. It's very difficult for me to say it in a forum like this, uh, ah, okay, Senator. Okay. But uh, I think, I think in a way, if we look at the Philippines, uh, it has. If you take, obviously, we we do not agree to anything illegal. We do not agree to anything violent, um, to crime. We don't agree to that. Period. So that's 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 something we all have to take for granted. If if you Take that away. The Philippines has significantly benefited from the Pogo sector's economic impact to the Philippines and to the people. It is not a mutually exclusive industry. It is not just benefiting foreigners or Chinese. It is benefiting predominantly a lot of Filipinos, more than the direct employees that are foreigner in the Philippines. Now, the question of socialized housing is not a question of inflation or pricing. It's a question of whether the population has jobs anyway to begin with or not. This problem has been here since the 70s and 60s. And from 20 million backlog, we're now down to about 6 million of the basic, basic, basic housing. But uh, we still have a long way to go. And the answer to that is not lowering down of prices. The market will dictate that depending on the balance between supply and demand. The answer is how many jobs can we generate at the quickest possible time? And I, I, I have to belabor and emphasize that there are hundreds of thousands of jobs depending on this industry now. If we shut it down now or abruptly, it will hurt us more as a country than not. Well, thank you. Actually, we welcome your perspective. Um, because some of us might be passionate for one side over the other, but we have to see things. And Mr. Chair, thank you so much for conducting a very fair and balanced hearing so we can hear both sides. But uh, if I may move that we have another hearing so that we can hear directly from these that uh, other agencies like PAGCOR who have to be present here and maybe because of the 
um, interjection of Senator Cheese, we might ask uh, also the Secretary of Finance uh, to give his um, justification for for the statements they made um, against Pogo. So thank you. Thank you to our guests also. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Senator Poe. Uh, I think uh, I'm following the uh, presentation of uh, Mr. Lee Chu. I think you're just going into the meat of your presentation. Uh, um, well, S Senator, thank you. If, if we have more time, we'd be, I'd be happy to go through it. If, or yeah, if not, just for the record, I think uh, I just want to put this on record so that uh, when in the future people will review the transcript, um, they can go back to the records. But uh, with the motion of Senator Poe, we will suspend this hearing later on. But let uh, continue to finish your, your uh, presentation, and then um, we'll reserve questions for a later date. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, next slide, please. I guess if we look at the Pogo sector and how they've benefited the Philippines, uh, they've occupied a lot of office space. They, they currently occupy 1 million square meters of office space throughout the country. And most of that is in the Bay Area, in uh, Alabang, in Ortigas, in Cavite, and Makati. Next. They also occupy two times the amount of residential space all over the Philippines. And yes, we talked about affordability. They're occupying and leasing residential space in very depressed prices. And it's only because of this industry that those prices have gone up. Because those prices have gone up, a lot of money has been poured into redeveloping these communities. Second, because the prices have gone up, the local governments have been able to raise um, the zonal values that directly impact the and benefit the revenues of those local government locations because uh, now you have real estate taxes that are done at a much much higher base and zonal values that are driven up by the market that then tax transactions at a much higher base and so a lot of people win just because of the real estate activity being driven by this industry and because they have terminated 630,000 square meters throughout the country in the last 30 years, this slide summarizes what we think is the economic impact of the, of the sector. Now, people might say it's just isolated to the real estate industry, and I strongly disagree because the government themselves are directly attached to the benefits and pitfalls of rent because of the VAT. Now, uh, before the Pogo sector happened, the Bay Area was doing 700 pesos per square meter of rent for office space. And for those companies who are not VAT exempt, such as almost everyone that's not a BPO, the government gets 12% of 700 pesos per square meter. Because of the POGO sector coming in, those rents for the POGO sector specifically, and not apply to anyone else, the rents went from 700 pesos to 1,000, to 1,500, to now 2,000 pesos per square meter. Okay? So the government also wins both ways. First, by having a much higher VAT base from 700 to 2,000 pesos, so 12% of 2,000 pesos. But second, you're also enjoying the additional income tax paid by the developers that are otherwise quite opaque. And that's just on the direct office leasing. The indirect, sorry, the direct leasing in the residential space benefits the government even bigger because the space is two to three times the size. And the base goes up from 200 pesos per square meter to about 1,000 pesos per square meter. The acceleration in the residential space is even more pronounced. Now, does that mean that Filipinos are being priced out of housing? No, because more supply has been created in these areas to the point where it is able to satisfy the 
um, the local communities. And the best example I can show you is the Pasay City Hall and the two kilometers around the Pasay City Hall where many dormitories have been uh, built and completed that otherwise would not have been developed if not for the Pogo sector. But because the Pogo sector had a need, many people, investors big and small, started developing dormitories that then increased the tax base of the uh, of Pasay and of Paranaque and of many, many other cities. Now, if we, for example, shut down what is left, next slide, then we will say goodbye to a million square meters of office space that's currently being rented at 1,500 pesos per square meter, at 1,500 pesos per square meter average, where the government enjoys 12% VAT of 1,500. Those rents will now go down to 300 pesos per square meter in, let's say, a place like the Bay Area. And the government, instead of getting VAT on 12% of 1,500, it will only enjoy VAT of 12% on a base of 300 pesos per square meter. That's a direct impact. The other thing about the Pogo sector is that it pays its rent for one to two years in advance. And so the landlord gets their rent in advance, but so does the VAT of the government. And so does the in income tax attached to that and so on and so forth. And that's just isolating it to the office sector. There are millions of people dependent on this industry just from the catering services all down the chain. From the time you serve the food all the way to the caterer, all the way to the number of caterers, all the way to the market vendor, all the way to the farmer. There's a very big unseen chain of events that's going to disappear if if all of a sudden these people stop catering and they eat a lot, you know, they also consume a lot. And is it, is it, are they consuming at the expense of the Filipinos? No. Another service sector that uh, is impacted is the, the helpers and drivers that lo the locals employ Filipino maids and drivers. 4,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos, 6,000 pesos per month with very few benefits. And all of a sudden, this Pogo sector will hire the same talent for 18,000 pesos per, per month, 20,000 pesos per month, 30,000 pesos per month. And because of that adjustment in salaries, these people are able to send more back home to their home province. They're able to afford housing. They're able to afford better food. They're able to afford education. I, I am not for the social ills. The social ills have to stand on their own. But we cannot ignore the economic benefits of this industry. And they're quite deep and entrenched. And we need them, at least for now, to be able to insulate ourselves from the damage that's about to happen to the world in the next 12 months. It's going to get very ugly. <clears throat> and I don't think this, I, I think this is the time to kind of encourage more employment and investment than not. Will we become known as the Pogo country of the world? I don't think so. I don't think so. Are we going to all of a sudden run mega industries under the table in the informal sector, in the underground, I don't think so. If ever we end up doing so, it will not be because of this sector. It will be because of a multiple set basket of factors that's going to drive it. It's not just going to be single-handedly be created by this sector. I think this is my last slide. And thank you very much, Your, Your Honor, for having me, having me present. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Lee Chu. I have uh, a billion questions that I want to ask you. And a billion comments also on your very provocative um, statements, but that's good. Uh, the aim of this committee is to bring out all angles, uh, look at all different perspectives uh, so that we can be, uh, we can look at this as holistically as possible and recommend 
uh, to um, the body what will be a way forward. Uh, in the interest of fairness, we also invited um, another property company, um, Colliers, uh, represented by Mr. Bondo. She's still here. Uh, Mr. Bondo, the uh, research associate director for research colliers. All right. Um, you know, I, we have a few more uh, people to ask, uh, especially from uh, the side of um, uh, Dipogo. Um, but uh, I think we've been here since uh, one thirty. It's already four hours, and um, we've taken so much of your time. Uh, to be honest, uh, masama being chairman, ikaw ang huli magtatanong eh. So ikaw ang huli uwe. But I have a lot of questions. In fact, my table is full of questions to different sectors. So if you don't mind, we will suspend as the what Senator Poe mentioned earlier, and then uh, and. Um, uh, manifested, we'll uh, suspend uh, the hearing uh, for now, and uh, we will inform you of the next hearing. Uh, for the next hearing, we will require UF, NEDA, uh, BIR, as well as PAGCOR, especially PAGCOR, to be physically present um, because we had problems in communicating, province, problems in um, uh, getting a lot of uh, data and facts will require them to come in uh, physically. Uh, the rest will still be on a virtual basis, but you're more than welcome to join us physically. I think it's better. The communication is faster. There's no lag. And uh, I think the, the, um, uh, the encounter is much more um, uh, robust. So, um, so we'll suspend the hearing uh, for now. But I, um, I thank everyone, personally thank everyone for, um, for joining us today and uh, for um, participating in this hearing. Um, I just have a few items to request from all of you. Uh, this is from the request of our senators earlier. And let me just dictate it one by one. For PAGCOR, reasons for the 75% compliance rate of enforcing offshore gaming license. And then number two, action points in maintaining its monitoring system as the state regulator. For PNP, how much is spent on solving cases and in surveillance? We actually tried to do this on our own, but if you can give us your official data on that. For DOF, position paper and how much revenue or GDP contribution POGO should yield for the economic benefit to outweigh social costs. I think this is from Center Cheese. Social costs of casinos and revenue and GDP impact. For AMLA, uh, position on the Financial Action Task Force, gray list, how having POGO operations legal or illegal is harming our reputation, reasons why Philippines is still on the gray list, if you, Bureau of Immigration, whereabouts status of illegal workers in the country, fees collected by BI from foreign POGO employees from 2017 to 2022. And to DILG, how much is spent on solving cases and surveillance? I think this is also for PNP. So with that, maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pagpunta ho dito. Thank you very much for uh, participation. I, uh, I'm very sorry we didn't conclude this hearing today, but uh, again, I have so many questions. I think some of the centers will still want to participate. So we'll suspend the hearing today and uh, we look forward in uh, seeing you again uh, probably next week, sometime next week. So thank you very much. This meeting is suspended.